put this up here. Got it. All right. Um, all right. So we got enough people watching the buttons. We have people coming in. We like, I want to just I'm going to just speak this out before I hit record or on our other option. Actually, I'll do it right now. All right. Um, I'm just going to say this, like we've got 214 people that are here on the 30th, the last, pretty much the last, it's the last Saturday training we're going to do for all of 23. I know that sounds very cheesy, but it is. And, and as we're going into a new year, right. And we're going into a new year, better prepared than we've ever been. Everything is built. All the friction points are removed. January 1st and January 2nd, we're, we're about to open up epic advances on the whole Triple R 247 businesses, income, uh, potential, everything. Uh, and, and what we, you know, this is a time of reflection. It's the end of the year. What did we do this year? What are we going to do next year? And I don't care who you are. Everything is fiscally driven. Like it, and I'm talking like your bills, your incomes, your statements, your interest payments, everything is done in a calculated way. And, you know, and I'll tell you, like speaking from somebody that's the owner of several corporations. And I mean, I think Tanya and I own, we own a lot. And the, this last week, you're looking at your, you know, end of year changes, shifts, things you get ready for um, tax planning. You know, our, our accountants do more work this last week than they do the rest of the year. Um, just making sure that Everything is reported right. Everything is documented right. Everything is set for the advantages that the tax code allows for us to go into the next year. And, and we're getting all these things done, you know, and, and that being said, the energy that's going around everything we got going on is just been freaking electric. And I got to tell you, like normally, um, and I, I'm just going to say this because you look at the, the list of priorities and I'm just going to go over something and, and um. I feel very inspired to cover this today, but, you know, Tanya and I usually, we enjoy the end of the year. We celebrate what we've done and we celebrate what we know is coming. That's an important thing. A lot of people don't do the celebration of what was coming because you manifest it. You know, it's coming. You've got to receive it first. You got to receive it and, and act as if treat it as if it's already here or it doesn't come. I hope you guys hear that. And I got, I got, I got instructors and I even got some MSIs that I've been really trying to coach on that, but it's, and, and I got to tell you personally, it wasn't easy for me. It went counterintuitive to what I was raised and taught that, that, you know, like you, you don't just manifest things and it comes. No one believed that you, they would hear it. Cause, and, and the people, and I'm just going to say this, the people in my life that told me this is how it worked. We're multimillionaires already, very successful people. The people that told me it didn't work were barely making their bills, struggling. I'm just going to put that out there. I'm just going to say there might be some very big truth to this, right? Well, in my life now, I'm going to tell you it's 100% fact. If you don't manifest it, receive it, and celebrate it before it's here, it's not coming. Because you're saying that you don't deserve it and you're not ready for it. And you know what the universe does? It pleases you. It gives you what you want. The, the universe, and I'm going to say God, God wants you to have what you feel like you're ready for. And he's not going to give you more than you asked for because that's not, his, that's not how this works, folks. God doesn't wake up in the morning and say, you know what? I'm going to give Stacy all this stuff because she deserves it. She has to be ready for it. She has to be wanting it. She has to ask for it. And she has to put herself in a place to receive it or she's not going to get it. That's fact. And I'm going to just state this very clear. We have to get out of our own way and out of our broke ass environments in order to achieve more. Sorry, that's the fact. You have to do it. No one's going to do it for you. God is going to wake up tomorrow and say, you know what? I'm going to give you a kick in the ass and help you out. No, you're not ready for it. You don't ask for it. You're not ready to receive it. You're not going to get it. That's how this works. That's how it all works. Okay, now I'm going to say it bolder than my mentors told me, because I'm going to tell you the day I realized that's how it worked, everything got better, everything. And it's counterintuitive to how we're raised. It's counterintuitive to the environment almost everyone was raised in. So you're welcome. 
that's my gift for you in the final part of the year. And now with that being said, I'm going to, I'm going to, you guys, I'm going to share something that's been an amazing, an amazing asset gift blessing in my life. And that's my wife, Tanya. When she covers the training, she's going over today, guys, she's been preparing for this. She's been preparing for this. And, and you guys got to realize what she's about to do is a reflection of her growing in a significant amount of ways. So much. She didn't, she wasn't always ready to prepare and share all this stuff. And I'm going to tell you something. She has an innate ability to just do this. It's in her DNA to be organized, structured. And then she's been focusing on how do I teach others how to gain from this? You know, it's, it's a frustration point for, for her and I, when you, when you talk to somebody, they're like, you know what, Rory, and I, I get calls all the time, right? This isn't working for me. You're like, okay, so what are, what are you doing? What's your priorities? What are you, what's not working for you? Because here's the thing about this. Our system absolutely works. Oh, it, it's, it's 1%. It's not like that might work. You might get lucky. No, if you do exactly what we teach you, do exactly what I do, you're going to get exactly what we get. It's a freaking system that, that you just got to do it right. So if you don't show up and you don't do the work, you're not going to get the results. Okay, so when anybody comes to me and says, Rory, it's not working for me. I'm not making the money. You're like, okay, so what are you doing? What are you breaking down? What it comes down to is they're not doing it. Okay, so I'm going to go over this one more time. God, the highest power in the entire everything, everything, isn't going to just give it to you. Okay, so anything below that isn't going to give it to you either. You've got to go do it. You've got to accept it. You've got to, you've got to receive it. You've got to put it out there and say, I deserve this and celebrate it. And then it's going to come to you. You've got to manifest it and do all that. Now, we're really going to be diving in on this in our January event even more. But what you're about to get from Tanya is so freaking priceless. So pay attention. Take notes. We are recording this. And I'm going to tell you, it's going to be something we're going to want to put all of our new students through. But, but I need you to hear me. We've done the impossible in everything we've created with Triple R 247, and it's been God-given. And even that doesn't just give it to you. You still got to show up. You still got to manifest. You still got to say, I deserve it. And then you got to accept it. And you got to show up and do the work. And you know what? It should be a learning journey. And if it was easy, you wouldn't appreciate it. And when it's easy, it's because you've done the work to make it easy, and you're just going to start kicking some butt. All right, Tanya, I'm so excited for you to show all this. You guys, I'm serious. You guys are in for something amazing. And um, you're not going to get anywhere but here. There's something she's going to be able to deliver here. You just, I want you guys to really take it in. Tanya, I am so excited. This is the best gift we could give anybody, and we're giving it to them as we launch into the new year. I'm so excited. It's all yours. Thanks. Thanks, you guys. I'm going to, um, be honest, I'm very emotional right now because I've been a lot in prayer. Whenever I do any of this, you guys, I always have a lot of prayer and fasting and and, and time to like focus and think. I'm very, um, mo you know, I'm, I'm very religious. And um, so I believe that God can shift and change my life. And I let him be the one to guide me. So I try to like, while, while I'm, I'm one of those people that was taught that you prepare and prepare, but you ask God for direction, but you prepare and you work your butt off to get there. And then he will shift and direct you because it's like all things. You have to be ready to receive it. You have to be open. And if you've ever um, taken a, you know, I don't know if you, any, any of y'all are, um, you know, in church or anything, but if you ever had a calling or a church position that you've been asked to do, you learn way more than the people that at least I feel than the people you teach or the people you help. So it's the same thing with that for me here. And I, I find all, I find that to be completely true and I give all glory to God. Absolutely. Um, now one thing you guys, I want to say is um, I will talk quite a bit about um, that. My spiritual side of this in another, in a section of this, as we go through our and assess our goals. And I feel like that is very, very important so please make sure that you understand that I love all, I accept all beliefs and all, well, not, not all, but most all beliefs and religions. Um, I believe, I, you know, I believe as long as you have a higher power directing your life, you are, you know, you're in good hands. Um, so just take that for what it is worth. But I, I do not, I do not make, mis I do not, um, 
I, I do not make any kind of uh, claims for anything that I have been lear learned. I've been blessed. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and start. And I have to say, you guys, I have, was born of goodly parents. My parents were very devoted to raising children that would have a happy and successful lifestyle. And so my parents greatly influenced my ability for this. I was taught as a young girl to set goals and how to achieve them. And they really invested in my ability to believe in myself to make change and to make progress and to have the control um, of changing my direction in life. If I wasn't happy with something, I had the control and the ability to change it. And as I've pondered this and tried to get prepared for this, I realized that that is not the key for most people. Um, and I was expressing this with Rory, and I realized that a lot of people don't believe that they have that ability. And so I'm hoping, if anything, that you guys will be open to understanding and making a little change that you really do have all the control. You really do have the power. Your life is your life, and it's been given to you to rule and direct and to, and to move it the way you want it to be. So um, with that being said, you guys, I want you guys to have a notebook if handy, a pen or pencil, um, and an open mind, you guys. If you can be in a place where it's quiet, that you can focus and, and listen, that would be best for you, just because I really believe that as we go through this, and you do, this is a lot of intro, introspective, a lot, of, a lot of reflecting on yourself and your life. And um, with when you're in that kind of zone, if you are open and willing to listen to a higher power, then that will direct you for better, right? So um, that is my that is my thoughts and my hopes and wishes for you guys as you go through this this training. Because when Rory and I started Triple R two four seven, we wanted to change people's lives. We wanted to help people who did not know how to help themselves. And because both Rory and I have a have had the blessings of knowing that we needed mentors in our life and working and seeking towards that to people that had what we wanted, asking the questions, working forward to find success in our own lives. We want to help you guys find that and be that. We want to be that for you. We want to help you guys to achieve what you want and to get out of your own way, really. I mean, the only roadblock in your way is you. I, that's 100% the truth. Um, and if you can take anything from that, take that. Anything from this whole training, take that. You have to get out of your own head. You have to move yourself around and realize that you can control and you can focus and you can change. And that does not mean it's going to be easy. Absolutely not. That means you're, that means that you're going to have to change your think, your thought processes. Your um, every because you know, guys, when you try to make a change, have you ever wonder, ever realized that sometimes you try to make a change and then whoopsie, you go back to your own thought process. That's the truth of it, because you're so used to thinking that old way, the negative way that you kind of you, you're you're making changes, you're you're correcting yourself. And so you always go back to what you have been doing. So to go back and to be focused on the new and changing a new direction, it takes a lot of work and effort. You just have to realize the triggers. You have to realize that you're when you're doing that and how to fix it and move back. And so that's really what I'm hoping that you guys will find through this whole thing. But we're going to go into everything, you guys. Um, I, these are all th different things that I have learned over the years. And again, I've been, my parents, about the age of eight, eight years old, they sat me down and that's when they started with me. They started teaching me and training me how to um, and implement goals in my life, how to implement change. What do I want? I mean, eight years old, that's pretty freaking young. And that's what they did for me. They thought that you know, I needed to learn what was my ultimate, ultimate goal for myself. What did I want to achieve? Because when you're young like that, innocence, you're still in that innocent stage. Life hasn't touched you, Right. And so they knew that I, my dreams and my goals, and you guys, the blessing that I had, my father wrote it down. My father wrote all this down. So once a year, he would have a, an intervention with me or a ch chat with me. And he called it, he, that's what he called it, like a one-on-one -on -one with, with him. And he would chat with us and he wrote it down. <clears throat> so I have notes from myself that he wrote from eight years old on. So that's why I think is because my whole life has been focused towards building goals, making change, moving directions. And I have all the notes to uh, reflect on it all. So <clears throat> with that being said, you guys, I wanted to talk a little bit about um, why goals are so important because just talking to uh, someone else and they said to me, they don't do that. <laughs> and I said, really, why? <laughs> because I laugh because it's so important. And um, they just they just work a different way there. That was the, that was the words. And I said to me, it's like, Here's, a, here's an analogy for you guys. It's like when you get in the car and you're going on a road trip and you have an idea of the direction you want, you know where you want to end up, right? This is what you want. 
but you don't put it in the GPS. You don't put anything in there. How are you going to know how to get there? You're going to, you're going to figure your way out, I'm sure. I mean, you have a general idea, but are you going to fall off? Maybe you'll run into roadblocks. Maybe you're going to run into issues. If you don't put the, the GPS, the coordinates of where you want to go in there, the GPS can't figure itself out, right? It can't map you into the best direction, the, the best direction for you. That's the same with goals. Goals are your GPS through life, guys. You have a dream, a vision, and we're going to talk about vision boards and that in the next section of this. But if you have a goal, you have a dream, you have a vision, you write it down. Great. How are you going to get there? If you don't write it down, you don't know what you want. You don't have a, a goal set for it. You, you have no idea how you're going to get there. And what happens ultimately, and in my experience, is that you fall back on those negative feelings and you decide that, no, oh, you can't do that. That was unrealistic. And you do that terrible thing where you dumb down your goals. You make them less and less and less and less until you are not really achieving what you want or, or you're believing that you cannot achieve it. So it's so important to set goals. <clears throat> I cannot tell you how important it is. I am one that I set goals all the time. I set yearly goals, quarterly goals, five-year goals, 20-year goals. You guys, we're living a 20-year goal right now, my husband and I, as we live in resorts and travel the world. This is a 20-year goal that we set that we're living now. So dreams come true and there's path to make them. You just have to be real, real with yourself and realize, okay, this is a X goal and it's okay to reassess. Don't give up with the goal, just reassess it, right? So I'm going to go into it. I'm going to share a bunch of quotes and different things from different uh, mentors that I've had throughout my, my life. Um, and uh, hopefully that helps and with some of you guys, but setting goals is the key to achieving great things. Setting goals is a key, the key to achieving great things. Goals will give you the motivation to work towards the future, period. Most people just live day to day. They do not work towards a future. They don't see a better vision for themselves or a better, a better output for themselves. They just go blah, blah, blah. They just plot along, right? They don't see it. If you don't have a goal, you don't have a, a, a future, future to look forward to, to be honest with you. So I'm going to share my personal approach to setting goals and what has changed my life, what has helped me and influenced me. And I hope that you guys in, in, um, can learn and share from this. But learning how to set goals, truthfully, you guys, was the quickest way that I was able to process and change my life. It changed my, the effect on my life, my beliefs, my viewpoint. All things changed when I learned to set goals. And again, I learned this as a young age. But when I realized that I didn't need to have the daddy talk and I could realize that I could do it myself. I could just talk with myself and have that inflection and move on. I, that's when things changed for me too, because I realized I could just do it. It doesn't mean I didn't call my, my mentors, which one of them was my father. Um, and I didn't, it doesn't mean I didn't do that and walk through it because that, that's what they're there for. You guys, when you see somebody that has what you want and they're willing to help you and counsel you and guide you, that is an amazing gift. Please grab onto it. Please. You have that here as well. We, you have what we, Rory and I want to help you. We want you to, we want to share with you and we do it without an expense. So please grab onto it, share, move forward, believe in yourself. So <clears throat> learning that not only having goals, but having a direction caused, caused me to, it helped me with anxiety and depression. You guys, I suffer from that from most of my younger life. Um, and so it really helped me. It helped save me. It helped focus me and ch change my life. And then not only that, it changed my income, it changed my personality, and it changed my lifestyle, and it changed my accomplishments. All this happened just by setting goals. Practicing goals and setting uh, and, and setting goals is has I, I like five factors that we are all affected by in our lives. Ready? Five of them. I'm I'm a lister. I like to give you like little synopsis, so you'll notice that in all my trainings. But the five factors is our one is our environment, two is events. Three is our knowledge and five is our overview of the future. Okay. So number one is probably the biggest. That's why it's number one. It's our environment. What did, environment did you grow up in? What have you been broken to believe? What has shaped your world for the good or the bad? What has shaped your world? Um, were you not, most people, like I said, I realized that most pro people were not blessed with parents like me, where your parents told you that you couldn't do it. That was too big of a goal. Dumb it down. Were you, were you told you weren't smart enough? Were you told you that you couldn't achieve things? All this is really affects your mindset. It affects where you go. 
And you guys, the good Lord doesn't mean that to happen. You are meant to have joy. You are meant to have success. It's really what is your outcome goal? Why do you want it? That we'll think, talk about that a little bit later, but that will change everything for you. So what is your environment that you're living in? That is so important. And we'll talk about that a little bit more, you guys, because I truthfully believe the environment that you surround yourself in really affects the way that you think you process thought and uh, it also affects your go, go get it. I have watched people in triple R who have come in and out of relationships and they've been in a relationship that wasn't healthy for them. And then they've just fallen away and not built anything for themselves anymore. They've all about the other person and building. And if you're in a healthy relationship, that isn't what happens. You guys, I feel like I am in a healthy relationship. My husband and I have the same dreams, the same goals, the same vision, the same direction. And the great thing about it, and I was just talking to him about this this morning, is that I feel like what we did was we assessed, okay, you're better at this. I'm better at this. We're going to work together to achieve our end goal, which is the same. And we just kind of broke it up and divided and moved forward. And that's what we did. But we all have the same, both Rory and I all both have the same direction, the same end goals, the same desired outcome. So if you are in a situation that is not healthy for you, that will affect your outcome for sure. So you have to acknowledge that first. You have to look at your, your life, what you're living and all that. And we'll talk about that a little bit more. Number two is events. What has happened to you in your life, right? What, what has happened to you? What have you overcome? What have you, what have you had to survive? Um, I, I tell this often, but we are all victims. We're all survivors, whichever way you want to look at it. Everybody in this world has had things that have happened to them that have not been great things. And it's what you do to after it that that uh, uh, evaluates you what what you do after it decides who you really will become right and i'm not saying that things don't happen that are that you need help with overcoming absolutely but what i'm saying is are you a victim or are you a survivor i choose to be a survivor um and i i choose to step up from that and move move forward i i look at the output that thank you for making me stronger and i'm going to move forward on it Thank you for showing me what I could handle, what I could overcome, what I could push forward through. And that's what I think with my with my um, situations that I have had, because I've had a lot of really things in my younger life and my earlier life, my earlier years that I've had to overcome. Like most people, we all do that. It's a, our 20s are all about learning. Our 30s, too. <laughs> just only our 40s, too. But, you know, we just keep learning as we grow. But it's not about what you've had to survive. It's what you've, what you've learned from those experiences, because I, you know, um, I believe for completely that when things are placed in your life, God puts them there for you to overcome and become stronger. And I really believe that we asked for it before we came down here. Um, so I believe that, you know, when we want to learn and grow something. And so God's going to direct our life and you guys, God's there, whether you believe it or not there. So it doesn't matter if you believe my beliefs don't require you to believe so, but he's there, whether you believe it or not. There's a higher power and he does direct our lives. Um, and so um, we asked for things before we came to this earth, before we decided to be here. And I think that God is helping direct our lives for the greater good. And if we allow him to have put his hands on us and direct us, amazing things will open for us. So to me, when I looked back on some of the things that have happened to in my life, and they, I've had some pretty things, pretty terrible things that nobody, I wish on nobody, to be honest with you, but I, what I learned from them and how I learned to cope and how I learned to help others because of it. And that's really what I think God wanted me to learn from those. So the events that happened in our life, whether great or bad, what do we learn from them? And sometimes, honestly, you guys, we learn from the worst, the bad things better than the good. So the, the idea, the goal is to switch your, switch your mind to learn from the good. So you don't have to have the bad anymore, right? Switch your focus. Um, knowledge, what you've been able to acquire. And honestly, I'm going to put in the knowledge section is your mentors, who you choose to mentor your life, who you choose to help influence your life. That is a huge key. It's a huge thing. If you are listening to somebody who is not where you want to be, who has not walked the walk, who is not also doing it currently, then you're setting up to fail. The eighties were amazing. I found I found success in the 90s myself. My I know my husband did as well into into the 2000s. But if we weren't currently right now in the 2023, the end of 2023, launching into 2024, doing the walking the walk and talking the talk, you shouldn't be listening to us. But we are. So what mentors are you choosing? Who are you listening to? What experiences do they have? And you guys, a good mentor. This is how you know. 
is going to share with you guys positive influences, positive directions. They're not going to weigh you down. Well, I remember when this happened to me and they're not going to weigh you down with those. Remember, I call them the remember wins because they lead you down a path of, of sadness and it's not uplifting. It's not happy. Like I said, everybody's had sad times. What's the focus? What'd you learn from that experience? If you have a good mentor, they're going to say, you know, I had that experience too. This is what I learned from it. They're going to help direct your thought and your focus. So knowledge is super key. Continuing to grow, to continue to to learn and to continuing to trust in in the direction that you need to go and, and that you'll find people that will help you and enrich your life. So that's very, very important. Number four is results. What have you experienced and tried to do? And what were the results of that? Right? What was the outcome of that? And if you have that, okay, you have a God, now you started here and this is what happened. Now you have to assess the line that you took to get to here and maybe tweak it a little bit. Maybe you didn't get what you wanted the first time. That's okay. Every single millionaire, billionaire, zillionaire has all had failures. It's what you learn from it. It's what when you go back and assess the track that you took. And it's what, what you learn from that and how to move forward and how to change it to be better. So that's number four's results. Number five is our view on the future. And you guys, this is so important. And this is what we're going to cover like the second part of this training, which is our vision, our view, our, our dreams and our vision board. That's all going to be that second part. But it's so important because if you do not have that dream, that goal, that vision of what you want it to be, you're going nowhere. I promise you, if you don't have one, you're not going to get there. If you don't have a dream or a vision, you're going to sit right where you are. You're not going to move. You're not going to change. And that is 100% fact. So you have to focus on the future of what you want. And you guys, it's okay to tweak it. Maybe something that you decided you wanted was isn't working now and you want something different. You could Because as you change and progress, goals are meant to make you better. And as you change and progress, things change. Maybe your visions change. Maybe your ideas change. And that's okay. As long as you're not cutting yourself short and dumbing it down for yourself. As long as that's the case, you're okay. So... Um, so let's focus on our dreams, right? That's our dreams are the number one most important thing because they give us a path to the future. So make sure that your dreams are the greatest influence on your daily decisions and your activities. And that I need to repeat that because I want you guys to hear it. Make sure your dreams are the greatest influence on your daily decisions and activities. So every morning when you wake up and you decide you what you're going to do for the day, if you're like me, you map it out. Make sure that you still have those dreams in your head and that things that you're doing, I call them needle movers, things that you're going to do for that day are going to make move you in that direction to where you want to be. That is so important. The pull of our future should be the greatest pull on you right? Whatever you want to view, whatever you're trying to do, that should be the pull. Do not let laziness, gluttony get in the way of your dreams. Do not let that happen. It's so easy to just say, I'm going to rest today. I'll do it tomorrow. Do not. Make sure that every single day you are moving on. Again, I call them the needle movers for a reason because you're setting a goal. It's a track, right? And you're moving the needle more towards achieving that goal. So make sure that you're doing things that help put you in that process. Um, your dreams are to, uh, to greatly, inf- uh, what's my, I think I said that. Oh no, your dreams should greatly influence your future and help you to plan it. There are two ways to ap- approach the future, guys. It's with apprehension or anticipation. And your viewpoint of that, which one you choose will reflect your success. Most people have a lot of apprehension. They face they, because they have no direction. They have nothing planned. They have no goals. They have no dreams. They're just living day to day, plodding along. How sad is that? How sad is that? And it's okay if that's you right now. Just realize it so that you can move forward. You can make yourself a better life. Don't let the most important thing here, I already said it, but don't let someone else's view of you reflect your future. Please don't let that. You can achieve anything you want to. And maybe what you, maybe you have this goal. And you want to achieve it and you think, okay, I'm going to do this in a year. And you don't quite meet that year. Maybe it's going to take you another year. And that is 100% okay. You have to reassess as you go. So if you plan out the future and approach it with uh, with, um, anticipation, your future will capture your imagination, right? It will open up things to you. I'm going to give you some several examples here of what 
I set a goal for myself when I was 15 years old that I would go to Italy with my father. My father, who is now 83 years old. I'm going next year. So that set, I set that when I was, that was years and years ago. <laughs> and I set that goal. And yet here I am about to achieve it. My father, who is full-blooded Italian. And we're about to take him back to where his ancestors are from, meet his cousins, meet his relatives in Italy next year. So it, I meet it with anticipation. I've been so excited for this outcome. I've been so excited. I got a little waylaid because I thought I'd be with my mother and my father. My mother went up to heaven for me. Um, and so she's there looking over us. But so I got a little waylaid, but I went back to it. So it doesn't mean that roadblocks aren't going to fall in your way. It's about getting back to it and believing in yourself and moving forward. So I'm about to achieve a goal that I set, what, 45 years ago, guys. <laughs> yeah, well, no, 35 years ago, I think. But anyway, I'm aging myself. Anyway, a long time ago, 40 years ago, okay? It's a long time. It's a long time. But I'm about to achieve a goal that I set so long ago that I don't, I didn't even realize I had it until I started talking to my father and I remembered it and brought it back. And it's amazing what, when you put something out there and you keep working towards how it comes back into your life at the right time. So just keep that in mind. Um, so let's see. Um, a well-designed goal will pull you in their direction. That's what, that's what I was just trying to tell you. That goal has pulled me in that direction, whether I knew it or not. It's pulled me that in that way. Um, a goal, a, 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 a well-designed goal will um, better, def you, the better you define them, the better you describe them, the harder, the harder you will work for them and the stronger they will pull you. So when you, when we're going to set goals, I'm, you're going to put a goal and we're going to be very, very specific about your goal. And then you'll have an output for it and you'll it'll move, it'll move you that in that direction. Plus you guys, I want to say this, and this is so important. Having the goals will pull you through difficult times. There were times that I had to, we, that, you know, you guys, I want you to understand everybody has failures. Everybody has downs, right? I had those two where I had to, I lost everything, had to rebuild, but my goals, my vision, my dreams pulled me through that. They helped pull me and guide me direct, direct me through that. So that's why setting goals is so, so important. And so, like I said, I've said before many times that without goals, your life, you're just making a living. You're just walking through. You're just doing the to-dos is what I call them, the to-dos. You're just living life, going to work, coming home, sitting your butt on the couch, watching a TV show. And that to me is horrible. That is not what God intended for our life to be. Where's the joy in that? Where's the happiness? Men are that they might have joy. Where is the joy in that? That's not, there's no joy for me. Live, watching somebody, another TV show about something else, somebody else's life, not achieving or working towards my own. Wow. I just can't even fathom that. I do not understand that. So I just, I just feel like that is so sad to me. There's, and I'm not saying there's no time for like movies or TV that that's do you guys. Okay. I'm just saying that's not something that myself, I, that I choose to do on a daily basis at all, because I want to have a happier direction. I have major goals and I have achieved major goals and I want to continue to achieve major goals. Um, let's see. Um, I also want to say that by not having goals, sometimes you get trapped by the economic necessity of your existence. Again, I'm going to say that again because it bears repeating. By not having goals, you get trapped by the economic necessity of settling for existence. Okay? You're settling for existence instead of substance. And here's the key. We all have a choice. We all have a choice. We are the only person in our life that chooses our actions. Now, there are some things that come into your life, of course, that are negative or that you can't, that you can't um, control, but what do you control? You control how you react to them. You control your output. You control what you decide to take in and what you decide to go, no, nope, I'm not going to have that today. That's negativity. I'm not going to let that into my life. And again, you guys, the biggest, the biggest factor for this really is your environment, who you're living with, who you're talking to on a daily basis, who you're working with, all that affects your environment and it does affect your mindset. So we all have a choice who we're willing to work with, who we want to let in, what, what we're going to take on. Because you guys, when we, when someone else vents to us, we take on that negativity. So I'm sorry. I don't take on that kind of stuff. I just don't because I don't believe venting really helps. I don't, I do not. I believe looking at it and saying, okay, this is what they're coming at me with. What's the good 
what, what can I take away from that as, as a learning tool and move forward? And that's what I believe in. Venting helps no one. Do you know what helps? Instead of the venting, when you feel like you need to vent, you need to be praying to a higher power. You need to be asking God to take that burden from you because he will, if you only ask, and he will help, help soothe your soul and direct you in a better, in a better light. So we all have that choice. So what are you choosing to do with the negative that comes into your life? What are you choosing to do with, with the positive in your life? We can either make a living or we can design or we can design a life. What do you want? Do you want to make a living or do you want to design a life? I want to design a life. I want to have a life full of joy, promise, hope, aspirations, encouragement, love. That's what I want. So um, let me see where am I here in my thoughts. I kind of got, I get very distracted sometimes. <laughs> it's like, you guys, I just think all glory goes to God. And um, I, I just, without having that belief in that lifestyle, I just, that's how sad to think that we're just wandering aimlessly. And so I get really caught up in that because anybody that I know that's successful all has a belief in a higher power, every single person. So if you don't, you might want to check your thoughts um, and, and, and realign them. Um, if you want your bank balance to be bigger, you need more reasons to accomplish greater things. I will repeat that. <laughs> if you want your bank balance to be bigger, you need more reasons to accomplish great things. That's 100% the fact. If you have enough reasons to accomplish great things, incredible things will happen for you. Intelligent and incredible things will come and be in your way. Your intelligence does not determine your output, guys. It's your mindset. You can be as smart as can be, but if you do not have the right mindset, you don't have the right goals, the right directions, nothing's going to happen positively for you. So if you want that positivity to happen and, and better direction, you need to have the goals and have the mindset and, and keep correcting your mindset. Um, so here is the key. You ready? The key. If you have enough reasons, you push for success. If you have enough reasons, you push for success. And I like to say your reasons are your why. Your reasons are your why. And you know, a lot of us here, you guys, we're more mature in age. I like to call that because we age like a fine wine. But um, we, our, our, our whys have changed. My, you know, working with my, taking care of my little ones has now changed to I have, I have grandchildren now. And being with them and, and giving them experiences and things that their that their parents can't do for them is is a lot is a lot of driving force for me. I have huge goals for my grandchildren, huge dreams and visions for them. Um, so in your this is one thing I want you to say, you guys, your reason, your why, should be so important to you that if it was taken from you, you would break down. That's the truth of it. I know my why, if it was taken from me, I would, I don't know, I would be a big ball of mess because it's that important to me. So, and then here's what one of my mentors said to me, you guys, and this has stuck through with me through many years, is that reasons come first, answers come second. And that has, I was like, oh my gosh, you're right. You're right. Your why comes first, what you want, your outcome, your goals, your vision, your dream all comes first. And then the answers always come second because you have to ask first. You have to ask and you have to proclaim what you want first. And then your path will be guided. You'll be directed in a way that will help you with your outcome, with your answers, with your why, with your reasoning as to why, why you want that and how you're going to get it. So a path will be shown to you. You're all here because you ask a question. You wanted, you had a reason and you're here because of that reason. And now a path is going to be laid forward for you. It's going to be put out for you. You guys are going to be led along this path. And this is another key that I was told, that life has a way of hiding the answers and disclosing them only for those who look for them, right? So life has a way of hiding the answers and only disclosing them to those who look for them. If you're not looking, you're never going to look, see it because you don't know to even look for it, guys. That's why as you reassess every year, that's why we're, we do this goal training for every, we've done it the last three years, I believe. Every year, because it's so important to reevaluate, to relook. What do I want to look at now? What do I want to focus on? What do I want to move? What do I want to change? 
And that's why, because life will never disclose to you, will never lay out to you what you, the answers. You have to look first. When you know what you want and you want it badly enough, you will find it and you'll figure out a way to get it. You'll figure out a way to get it. That's, that's the key point. Uh, so many people say, what you're asking is so hard. This is so difficult. Is it? Or is being broke difficult? Because I think being broke is difficult. I think that is so unhappy. That is a place I never want to be. I will work and do anything I need to do in a positive light to be uh, fix that. That's difficult, you guys. Paying one bill and having to wait another couple of weeks to pay another one, that's difficult. That stresses me out. So, you know, is really doing what we ask here that difficult? I think not. Really, no. You choose your difficult. You choose your difficult. It, really, truthfully, that is one of the things I was told. I remember being the... Uh, my first son was born and they said to me, I said, oh, this is so difficult. This, this, and this, and this is so, I can't, I don't know if I can do everything. And they, they said to me, lady, you're going to choose your difficult, honey. You might as well figure it out now. What's difficult to you? Is this and this and this? Cause you're seeing only this, or is this and this and this? You're like, oh, maybe that is more difficult. I'm going to work on this. So it's really the outcome, the outlook. And it's why mentors are so important to you. Because if you brought a thought to me and said, this is what's difficult to me, I bet I could tell you a million ways what's more worse and why you should do that. Because what I can see the outcome that you can't see because I've achieved what you haven't achieved, right? And that's why mentors are so important. So um, let's see. It's amazing. I was going to say, it's amazing how answers and solutions to guide their way into your path when you, when you actually de declare what you want. Um, and Rory talks a lot about this, about declaring what you want, putting it out there. Because that's why his mentors have guided him. I'm going to quote one of his mentors. My husband was fortunate enough to know and work with Jim Rohn. Um, he is an amazing man. Um, he is no longer with us, but he's an amazing, amazing person. And he really guided and put a lot of in, um, direction on my husband as, as a young man in his 20s. And also, I believe that Niall was fortunate enough to work with him as well. And he really did a lot of inspiration for him. And so in that, because it was a mentor to my husband, I took it upon myself to learn and grow from him as well, right? So he said, what if you had to be rich? Are there books and tapes on the subject? The answer is yes. There are plenty of good ones. But if you don't have to be rich, you probably won't read the books or listen to the tapes. And uh, that just struck me. I and mean, of course this dates him because tapes, now we would do Audible, but it, you know what I'm saying, it dates you. But if you didn't have to be rich, if you didn't have to get out of your experience, you're broke. If you didn't have to get out of that, would you look for the answers? No, you wouldn't. If you didn't have to find a medical solution, I have a, a son that's sick, but you didn't have to find a medical solution, would you look for the answers? No, I am. I'm diligently seeking for those answers because I want to help my child. So if you don't have to fix it, you're never going to look for it. You're never going to listen. Necessity, again, is what drives us to find the answers. So first, the reasons, and second, the answers. What is the reason for doing well? This is where you have to have some soul searching. And you can come up with a fairly strong list of, um, of reasons to accomplish great things. So we're going to be doing this in just a few minutes here. We're going to come up with our list because you have to soul search. So just please keep in mind when the soul searching that we do here is only this limited time because I only have a two hour window. Um, so what's limited, right? Really, the, you need to reflect in yourself and you need to work with yourself and move forward to be able to figure out what you need. But I'm just going to we're going to dive a little bit. I'm going to help you guys a little bit with some things and then I want you guys to seek more. But I find the reasons to be um, pretty in, in, pre, in a few different directions, right? Um and I'm going to say, for those of you guys who have been in the bank training will understand what I'm saying here. And I found this to be so funny because this was told to me of a mentor. And I'm talking, this was in 93, 1993. And then, yeah, I'm learning it. And I see it again reflected there. But you can, your, your reasons are very, very personal. They're so personal that maybe you want to write them down and not share them with anybody. And that's okay. That's okay. But there's different things that I know. Um, recognition is one of them. You want you if you want to be recognized, you want to achieve great things, and you have that uh, that status. That's okay. There's nothing, no shade in that, you guys. Um, if you want that recognition, also there's some people that love that just love the way it makes them feel. They love being that winner, right? That's all about recognition. They love being that winner. They love being on stage. They love being presented forward, being front, winning the awards, having that accolades, feeling like it is a successful achiever. 
And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Whatever drives you to be a better you is a, is a good thing. So I want to, I'm going to share just a couple of experiences, but Rory and I know several millionaires, you guys, several, not just a couple of several, and they work 10 to 12 hours a day still, not because they need to, but because the joy and the pleasure of being a constant winner, it drives them to be successful. It drives them. And because of that, and you guys, because of that too, even though that that's what drives them, they're out, the, the result of that is amazing. They're able to help people. They're able to do things and direct things that they wouldn't be able to do. So money is not the drive, it's the journey. And that is, that is a quote right there, you guys. Money is not the drive, it's the journey. 100% truth. Have you've heard somebody, people say, if I was a millionaire, I'd never work a day in my life. And guess what? That is why they're not a millionaire. Because we are not meant to be lazy. Men, we are work, meant to work and, and progress, right? When we were kicked out of the Garden of Eden, what did God say? That we're going to till the earth with, this, with the sweat of our brow. Women are, gonna, women are going to as well with our, with our childbearing. We're going to be rearing children. And it's going to be difficult. And for any woman who's a child, who is any woman who's given birth, y'all know not only the birth, but the whole process up into the teenage years where you're like, I'm going to kill them or they're going to kill me. It's difficult. And when you get, when you escape that and you're like, oh my gosh, they're not in jail. They're not dead. They haven't killed anybody and they're successful. Thank the Lord. <laughs> you know how difficult that is. So um, it's, it's just, things are difficult. And that's, and that is just what we're meant to be. We're not meant to be lazy. We're not to, uh, meant to achieve success and then quit. That's just not what life's about. So if you've ever said that to yourself, as soon as I get to this, I'm going to quit. That's probably why you're not getting there. That's probably what's a summary block in your way. Um, so because I really believe, like I said, life isn't about quitting. So another reason for wanting to uh, another why, if you will, is your family. Family is a reason that will push you greatly. I've never seen a family push you more than, than most people. Most people will do something for somebody else that they won't do for themselves. And how many times have we said that? That's part of the problem here with when you work for yourself, you'll go to a boss, you'll do it, you'll work a nine to five, or a, sometimes like I was working a seven to 10, you'll go do that and you'll work and you'll show up and you'll be pr productive there, but you'll quit on yourself. But if you're wise, your family, you have outlined goals and direction to achieve certain things, you will work your butt off for it. You'll, you will push yourself forward it. So um, family is a powerful factor and it's a powerful factor for me. Wanting to make, take them places and enjoy times pushes me particularly to achieve more work harder than I ever would without them. Family is always my motivator. It's my reason. It's my why. I want to give them experiences. I want to enjoy things with them. And it pushes me to achieve better things. It pushes me to work harder. When I get sad, I keep thinking of my family and that pushes me to do more and to be better. Um, Benefactors are as, being a benefactor is also another reason, if you would, or helping others, nurturing others is a key word there. Um, if you want to help others and encourage them to be a better them, um, some people want to gather resources and intelligence and money and, 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 and information to help and benefit others. They want to help guide people and love on them and move them in a certain way. And that is another guiding factor. Some people like want it. That's why they accumulate wealth is to help others. And that's great. That's a great, that's an admirable thing. Um, so the thing is, you guys, what inspires you? What inspires you? What, what makes you want to be you? What makes you want to achieve? What pushes you? And I want to stop for just a second because I want you to think about this for just a moment. What inspires you? What, what category do you fall into? Do you want to be here to learn and grow and, and have knowledge? Do you want to learn to become, to help people and to encourage them? Do you want to be that person for your family to help encourage and motivate your family and share experiences and do things with your family? Or do you want to just be a winner and achieve and, and glory and be and have the praise, but yet also in that path, become a better you? What, what, what inspires you? you? You have to figure this out because this will help you with everything, guys. What direction are you in? And it's okay if it's more than one. Just, just knowing it is what helps you. So next, and I feel like this is one of the most important things as well, is what has turned you off? What makes you not want to do anything? What makes you not want to give work to work? What makes you want to give up? What makes you want to just sit your butt in, the, in that couch and watch TV and just forget your life? 
What negative philosophies have you allowed to limit you and turn you negative? You guys, all, I always tell, I tell my children this all the time, all growing up, I would say, what is it that you, what, what is it that you're thinking? Why did you do that? And what I always, they, they can all quote for me. I will say knowing is, and they'll say half the battle. Because if you know what is the key, what's making you go in this direction, you can change it. If you accept responsibility for the, what you have done, you can change it. You can affect your life. And the power and the ah, moment that comes with knowing that is phenomenal. So what negative philosophies have you allowed to limit you and turn you negative? What? Whose thoughts and processes are you believing? Is it his? I don't think so. If you're negative at all, it's not that direction. You might want to think of the other one because it's not a good direction. It's not the way that you should be thought. It's not the way you should be directing your life. So when you know the answer to this, you can correct your direction and you can help your, you can help yourself going forward and moving and pushing towards a better dream. So keep in mind that you're going to have those times that you're going to, you're, so you're training your mind, right? Our mind is a muscle, just like anything else. And you're training your mind to go positive. So you need to have a path. And I'm going to go more into this in the training in January. But you need to have a path that when you go negative, what you do to stop it. What you do to stop it. How you correct yourself. How you correct your, your trajectory of your life. Um, and it's a, it's a trained thing. Once you get in the training path and you go through that, you will understand. Rory, I, I want you to say something here because he helped me so much. My husband's been one of my mentors in my life. And he has helped me when I would go negative on things. And Rory, how important is that? Like the figuring well, out. So here, here's the thing. It's just like what I was talking about before. When you manifest and you accept it and receive it, the thing about negativity is that, so the universe doesn't deal in negatives. Just, just what, and that, that's, let me state, let me state this. The universe does not deal in negatives. It doesn't. That's something that is completely created by man. It, it, let's 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 just let's let me, let me just put some some things in into a trajectory for you. When you ask for something, right? Usually, it's something good and something you want. And if you ask for something that's not that's like evil, you're not. You watch what happens, right? And um, I'm I'm just gonna I'm gonna go into this. Like the universe does not deal in negatives. It just doesn't, right? If it did, this entire understanding of all the universes and all the galaxies and 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 the infinite amount of space just wouldn't exist. No, no, this, just let's just, just go with that, right? We we have an expansion of knowledge, and the more we find out, we we find that there is no end to this universe. Because it goes to another universe and another universe and another galaxy. It's ever expanding. We never find the end. That is, and, and, and it's not really even a positive or negative. It's, we, it's, it's just has to be ever expanding, ever growing, ever developing. And if it's developing and growing, growth is always good, right? The negative is is something that we throw into it and and again i'm gonna i'm gonna go into this like i, I think I, you know and i and, and tanny and i talk about this all the time like nature itself right nature itself runs on laws that we as man finally discover and and we we, we make a discovery well nature's already been running in those laws it's already existing and so when you break it down it's all positive growth right there is no negative mm -hmm. negative is a man infused it's bullshit right like let's just call it what it is and so when you let a negative thought in all you do is take yourself out of what you're meant to have and the only reason those things are brought up let's like like look at it in life who brings in negativity negative people that have let them soak up that and, and it's like a cancer it literally is a cancer they're not cancer by the, way, by the way if anybody thinks cancer is a good thing in any way i'd be amazed there's nothing good about cancer i think we all can say it's probably the 
one of the absolute worst things that we have to even understand. And, and a cancer destroys, right? It destroys. Well, a negative thought destroys. Like the power of thought is so amazing. So if you have all this amazing, we only have 24 hours in a day. And you're going to take all this incredible power to create that we all have. We are all creators. We are in the likeness of God. We are all creators. The power of thought is amazing. So when you let a negative thought in, why? Like it's just self-destructive. Yeah. It's, it's the same thing as you want to go cut yourself. Every time you put a negative thought in. So when I hear somebody say something in a negative way, I'm actually getting more vocal where I say, nope, restate that. No, uh, uh, restate that because I don't even want to hear it. It's toxic. And you let it go, you let it go, and it builds up. And the thing about it is, is where does negativity, like think about it in your life where negative things come from. It might be coming from a bad environmental person. Like even your mom, your dad can be negative, right? Bullies are negative. You know, you want to surround yourself with people that are raising you up and putting positivity in there. If you're around people that are negatively affecting you, make a different choice. Change your circle. It Um, does. Rory, I do want to point out too, this is to say, you guys, that Rory and I haven't lived our life without fail, without failing on certain things. But I want to say this is why I want Rory to talk about here is we've we've had some major losses, but did we let it? Did we let it control us, Rory? No, no, it, it, it can't. Because then it, then then it becomes even worse, right? Like 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 if you get let's say you get a bloody nose in in, in life, right? Do you want to continue to get another one, or do you want to protect yourself? Repair it, go forward, and learn a lesson. So when when you when, when you let something take you down, and you don't just get back up and go again, you're just you're you're taking more defeat that you don't need to take. Yeah, 100%. like we're all strong, we're all powerful, we're all creators. So create, go do more, create more. That negative stuff is 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 the worst. If you got somebody that's negative around you, I'm uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna just gonna challenge you. We it's it's we want to rise everybody up and give them a chance, but the best thing to do is say, hey, you know, that was a negative statement. Could you restate that differently? Because I understand where you're coming from, but can you state it differently? Or, you know, like ask them. Because just just like we teach everybody here constantly, right? When people come into Triple R two four seven, ninety five percent of them we already know come from a broken environment. They don't know better. They don't know. They don't know. We can't expect them just to grow into it. We've got to inspire it, motivate it. We got to constantly pour into them to teach them, show them and train them on the way that it should be. And it should be, everything should be awesome. No one deserves crap. Nuh-uh. No, we're God's children. We don't deserve it. When we get crap, it's because we're going the wrong path and we haven't learned our lesson. Literally it's what it is. And, and, and we're going to, we're going to get more challenges all the time to grow, but that we're here to grow and expand and have it. We're, we deserve amazing lives. And if you're not having an amazing life, get on track. That's what we're here to do. Get on track. I do want to say, guys, that with this comes the fact that we have learned, we've fallen and we've gotten up. And you know what's amazing is our goals. And I believe this for us. I'm going to speak for both of us. You can let me know if I'm wrong. But I think our goals drove us. Our goals drove us and pushed us to continue to get back up and to move forward. Not only that, you guys, we picked partners to work with. And we failed some of the time at this as well. But we have picked partners that we love and we trust and that have the same visions. You guys know we're we're building uh, DTCA and Brain Boot Academy, and we've chosen Daniel. Our, he's an amazing person. I've met personally. I love and adore him. I love his wife. His children are just so sweet. I love him. And that's a partner that we chose to be in our life, that he brings positivity and, and hope to our life. And I hope that we can share that with him as well. And then you guys have, you've met, many of you guys have met Jim Frankoviak, our attorney that works with us as well. And he's the same way. We've known him for years. And um, he also brings that love and that light and that positivity and that direction in our life. So we've chosen partners that have helped to uh, implement the visions and the, uh, the dreams and the goals and the directions that we want. And so finding that, making sure that you're on a team, you're working with somebody, you're going forward with someone that, that knows your goals, that has shares your vision, that wants to encourage you. And then you guys, not, I'm not even talking about the MSIs that we have here, some of our top leadership that I think are my family, my, my, my friends. You guys, are, I already talked a lot about Niall. He's my brother. And Dina now is my sister. 
And that's my family too, that I have chosen and I love and I encourage and I, we share each other's visions. We share each other's hardships. And you know what? No one's going to kick my butt better than Dina. She's going to tell me how it is. Get yourself up and go for it. She does it. And I love her for it. Right. And so that's what that, that's what that love and that friendship is. I know if I don't want, I don't want anything sugarcoated. I'm going to talk to her. I want to sugarcoat it. I'm going to go somewhere else. <laughs> I'm going to get us, but I don't because I want to see the truth and knew, know what I need to, to do and to move forward. And so that's the same thing. And then we, we have people here that are so giving and loving. You know, we have Andy Perryman, who is a, um, who is a pastor who works and shares and does a prayer circle and, and all that here because he uh, has ability to love and want to help. You know, then we, ha- we have a uh, Shar who does our graphics and our memes who stepped in to help us and do all that. And she loves and loves what she does. She loves the creative side of it, but she loves to help and share and, and encourage other people. We have Sheila Matchett, who is an amazing God-fearing woman who has such, such an inspirational life and story. I just, I cannot say enough about her, but she's homeschooled. She has so much education behind her, uh, so much knowledge base, and she's helping to work on the Brave Fin Academy and help dr- in that direction as well. She's got all this information, all this uh, things that she needs to help direct people. And we have uh, Stacy who works behind the scenes and helps direct and do all the, all the things that a lot of people wouldn't want to do. <laughs> she does it. She does all that hard stuff. She works with people that are not the nicest to work with, to be honest with you. But she stepped in and, de- and done that, right? Uh, I mean, it's, it's just phenomenal, the things that she helps us do it with in that direction. And then we have Linda Horn, who I cannot say enough good things about that girl. She comes in and takes over and we ask her to do something. She comes in. Does she want to? Oh, oh no. Oh, no, she doesn't. <laughs> but she steps into that Goya role, fills it, makes sure that we're, she's covering our legal butts to be for real. And she makes sure that things are covered and done the way that they need to be done. Now, do people get upset with her for it? Absolutely. But is it necessary? Absolutely. You know, absolutely. I mean, and I could say more about some of our other MSIs. They help us and do other things. You have Sean Flaney, who has a love for the wine. We have Nell Golinski, who helps us with a lot of the, the, the insurance and the different things like that. I mean, I could just, I could go, th- I could go through them all, to be honest. Um, we have, you know, uh, there's, there's Donna Walker. I just adore you, Donna. And she, her direction, her focus and her drive and her love is what's kept her here. And, and there, you have Dina, uh, you have Deanna, who is um, a hard worker and ethic and wants to succeed. And on the path, she's going to take no bullshit. I love that. And she helps people along the way. I mean, we just have so much, so much drive. And, and we have Sean. I, I can't, I can, Shane, Shane Belsito. You are an amazing person. He just, he doesn't let anything stand in his way. He just pushes forward. And I love talking to him. We were in, um, we were in, I think Fort Lauderdale, Shane, I believe. And he said to me, I know I need to start over and that's okay. I'm going to keep going. He just wants the success and the happiness and the pathway to, to achieve what he wants to achieve and to help as many people as he can along the way. This is who our leaders are, you guys. Roy, did I forget somebody? Oh, like we I, have a lot. <laughs> I, like I forgot somebody. I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings because I love them all. <laughs> so. uh, well, we got Sean, you brought up Sean Flaming. Huh? He, you know, um, he works, he, he serves our country and yet he tries to work and be a part of this too. I mean, that's just phenomenal. Yeah, um, I, look, I'm we, we go, I mean, we have the list and, and I'll, I'll just say this, like, you know, we, you know, we're, it's always awesome to reflect on who helped bring this here. And I just want to state while we're here, Triple R247 isn't just Rory and the Tanya show. This is everybody that's joined our vision and grow it. It's our leadership. This is so big. It's the vision that we have is bigger than us. And it's and, and I was always told that if your vision's right, it'll carry on a life of its own and it'll grow. Well, we've been growing. The, the, the Triple R247 vision took on way more than we ever thought it would go years ago now. And, and we just get to keep creating, adding, and, you know, again, 2023, we got rid of all the friction points. Like, and, and we're about to open up even even more. I mean, it's already more than we ever. I can I can tell you this. We're to the point now where it's bigger than we thought it was going to be. Tanya tells me all the time. She's like, I had no idea this is what this could create. And and then and then we and then we pause and we go, okay, what else do you think we can do? Like, it's creating more. Like, what else can we do? How you know what more can we do? How 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 much better can we make it? You just brought something to my mind, you guys. I want to say this right now because I've said it before, and I don't. I think it is worth repeating. Is that. I always tell everybody, if you do not have a why, borrow somebody else's why until you get there, their direction. 
not not so much their why, but your um your direction in life is what I guess I mean to say. If you don't have a direction, you don't know where you want to go, borrow somebody else's until you find yours. And so when Rory did start doing all this, I'm like, I did not know what to think of it. I was like, this is crazy. I'm, this is not my thing. I don't know. I've been in the finance industry for years. That's I know that direction. But here's the key. I married him. Do I trust him? The answer is yes. So I'm just going to trust his belief, trust his vision, trust that I know he knows how to get there, even if I don't know. And that's okay. So I just... But I just uh, jumped full on board with him and said, okay, I know his belief. I know his systems. I know that he has a path and a vision and I'm going to trust him enough to get there. And I'm going to jump on and follow it through. And absolutely. That's, that's what I've done. And then now he, he made a believer out of me. I mean, I already believed in him, right. But now I have a belief in this system and what we have here because it, I've seen people achieving and the people that I don't see achieving is because they're not doing the steps. They're not doing the actions. They believe in the negativity, not the positivity. If you want to succeed, you need to believe in the positivity. That's just hands down the truth. So um, that is what I just, I'm, I just. I'm going to okay. add to that. I'm going to add to that. Um, and I was trying to say it before, but you know, guys, repetition is the key about learning. And um, I, I was, uh, I, I've invested a lot into masterminding and getting consult from people that were adult educators and you guys will hear me i'll repeat things over and over again like i if it's really important you're gonna hear me say it multiple times because we have to hear things multiple times and if you're coming from a broken environment you got to hear things over and over again because how many times do you hear the negative stuff like look at it look at it like a balance okay and you got you got a balancing thing on right so look at the justice balance right everybody can picture that right well, if you got negative on there, it's weighing down. Over well, years of it. How old are you? You're 55 years old. You've got 55 years of negativity from your environment weighing you down. Now you enter triple R247 and we start giving you positive stuff. Well, how long is it do we have to pour into it? You got to listen to it over and over again to offset the balance. It's kind of how that works. It's just because we got to undo what we believe to be the truth, right? Perception is reality. Your perception is life sucks. These things happen. I'm never going to, I'm not worth anything. My, my environment, no one's made a lot of money and no one's really successful in other stuff. A lot of divorces, a lot of upset things. That's what you know. Well, if you want to have a better life, you got to change your environment. And that doesn't just happen. It's a weight. It's a balance. You can't just shift it in one day because you got all this weight down here. You got to offset with the, with the stuff here. That's why we constantly pour into you repeatedly. That's what happened to me. I had it. You guys, I didn't just have a mentor show up one day and teach me the stuff and I was ready the next day. No, I actually fought it because it was counterintuitive to what my environment had taught me. Whether you guys, we learn at a young age. So when you're one years old, two years old, three years old, four years old, and you're in an environment where it's not the best or the actually it doesn't matter what the environment, you're learning that environment, right? But if it's not the best, you're learning negativity. I had plenty of negativity when I, how I was raised, right? And I and I'll bring up the positivity all the time because I focus on that, like, the, you know, and it and it comes up. And you guys, I am so grateful for my grandfather because he poured into me all the time, and it was always positive and how to push myself to do more. In fact, recently had a, a had an account of some things come up, and in reading that, I realized more and more that. Every time I look back at my grandpa, when we sat down, would counsel me, it was always pushing me to do more. It was never, it was never mediocrity. It was never just settling. It was always, okay, you did that. Now let's do more. Okay, let's push yourself. He always pushed me. Always. It was, it was like, it's his DNA was just to do that, right? Like, if it wasn't perfect, well, do it better next time. Let's practice and get better. Like, always. You know, I was recounting to Tanya when I did my handwriting and learning to draft in and, and, and I remember him saying, okay, that's great, but let's make it better. Okay, do it again, and let's do it better. And, and see how you did your R's? Let's do it like this, and let's do it like this, and let's, and let's practice that over. And, and, and just write that letter. If I had a letter I had a problem with, I would write it over and over and over until my muscle memory had it to where it looked perfect. He wanted it to look perfect print. You guys, there wasn't computers. There wasn't computer drafting. Um, all these, and I was learning how to be a drafts. I want to be, I want to be like my grandpa. Right. So I, he was my, he was my hero. So I was learning all this stuff and you learn how to do it over and over again. Well, we're doing the same thing in all the skill sets we teach, right? How to do the BRT over and over again. Why 
because you're not going to learn it one day. You're not going to learn the art of communication the proper way one time. Think about all the times you learned it not to do it the right way or, or, or at all. Like it takes a bad thing to offset yeah. the positive because we, we, we stack that in. It's our learning, right? We're meant to learn from, the, from observing others. And that's our perception. We think that's the right way to go. And especially when you come into a, you know, you got a parent, that parent is everything to you. And I, and, I, I, and I think we see that more like we watch our grandkids and they look up to us so much, right? We're in their lives. They watch us. It, that's a big responsibility to aim them the right direction. It's on us. We're, we're part of their environment. What we teach them, what we show them, how we raise them. And it's the same on parents. That depicts what their future is going to be like. 90% of our environment depicts who we are. We are 90% of our environment. Mm-hmm. That's why garbage in, garbage out. How much screen time do we have? You know, and all that stuff I can bring up. But I'm going to tell you, <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to tell, tell you one more thing, and I'm going to pass it back to you. Is we are constantly going to be repeating ourselves to teach you the right thing, because that's just what it takes. And and the, one of the things that I I'm going to emphasize again, I'm going to repeat myself from something I said before. If you want to manifest and receive something great. You have to receive it before it gets here. It's one of the hardest things to learn. And I'll tell you why. Because we are all used to instant gratification. We get it, then we, we appreciate it. We, we receive it, then we appreciate it. It's the opposite of how the universe works. It's the opposite. When you, when you watch things, so like, I, well, I'll have a conversation with somebody that gets this, right? And they're just like, oh my gosh, things are coming really good. I can see it. We're we're getting it. In fact, we're gonna be, we're gonna have this. This is this is gonna happen to this right away. This they're they're already manifesting and receiving it. It's not even like a thought process. It's their habits. It's how they are. And guess what? It always falls in place. Everything works. Everything goes. And if they run into a block, they're like, oh okay. We, and their their attitude's different. Oh, hit this, but here's how we overcome it. And 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 this is where this is where the mind. The mind trust is so key in, in going over there because when we run into a problem that we cannot solve, go to your mind trust. Trust the people that you know think the way you want to think, that are positive, that have the answers and the insight. Because you get into a tune in. Like when one of my friends calls me with a problem, I'm already in a, a, I'm a, I'm a problem solver. I'm already, in that t- I'm already in that mode, right? That's what I'm trying to like, – I'm already creating. And I, and I actually get a kick out of hearing their problems because I want to help them because to me it's outside of my thinking. So I come from a different perspective. And then they run, and then if it works, everybody's happy, right? That's, and we try that's again. The key, that's the key to having a, a brain trust that he calls it. I call it mentors brain trust. Same thing, is that someone's coming at it from a different direction. They can see an out. They can see an outcome that you can't see, and that's why it's so important. That's why it's so important. And that's why teamwork is always better. Yeah. More minds, right? Okay. Like like Tanya sees things. Like we are you guys. I'm, I'll bring this up. We are completely polar opposites in almost everything. Well, that's true. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> it, it, first of all, there's never a dull moment in the Rickard household. <laughs> second, second, we Those solve a lot of things. We solve a lot of things. And, and we were talking, sometimes we're so in sync, balancing each other out on the, on the stuff. We just solve it. We didn't even realize that could have been a huge issue, but we just worked through it because we both know what our talents are, what our abilities are. And because we know them so well, we trust them so well, right? Yep, that's true. And, and that's that team. That's a great team. And that's what we're trying to get in in, in our, our goals, like is to get our masterminding going so well that our teams, your teams are, are, are cohesive enough that you can even grow. We're all in the same direction and everybody can come in there and help out, get through all the stuff, eliminate the negative that we shouldn't have anyway. Eliminate the negative. In, in, you know, um, I'm going to, I'm going to put one more thing out here and then, and then Tanya, I'm going to get it back to you. Um, you guys have you guys have you guys ever heard of uh, this is a different perspective on things. So you, you turn on the light bulb, right? And it lights up the room, right? Do you ever think about it? Maybe it's just a darkness sucker. Maybe it sucks the darkness in. Think about it. You can't prove it otherwise, by the way. It's scientifically you can't prove that it's not sucking in the dark. It illuminates, but what is that is that sucking in or pushing out? Prove it. It's one of the biggest things to look at. And, and then you start going into this, like the universe is constantly expanding. And what is dark? What is 
And if light is the removing of darkness, is it sucking it in or is it pushing light out? You feel the radiance of heat, but is that just the reaction of the, the friction caused from sucking all the darkness in? And when you look at negative and positivity, negative positivity, when you're seeing out the negativity, maybe that's where the positivity is coming in from. Enjoy it. And, and I'm going to tell you, if you like negativity, I, first of all, don't come around me on any of it. <laughs> and, and, and most of us thrive, thrive on positivity, right? It makes us happy. That's what we, you know, we do things where we're striving for that. Well, once you understand where positive comes from, it's actually positivity is from the very, the very moment we took a physical breath, that was a positive creation moment. We were meant to be that way. The negativity doesn't need to be there. You know, and yeah, we got all these things to get in the way. Finances. We, we have to have this measure of energy to get what we need to get, even to eat, breathe, food, all that, right? Okay, well, eliminate that situation because there's so many ways to get involved with this. It's energy. It's a tool, right? You just got to make your valuable to receive the energy, and then all that, all that goes away. Right. And and you want to make yourself, you know, a great beam and hope and and support for the family. So all that negativity can go away. Like it's all it's all energy. Right. It's all energy. Some energy is what we exchange for other things that we need. And then some energy is what we exchange for environment we need. But but just think about that, the, uh, the different way to twist. Right. Are we sucking darkness out? And that's where we get the power from. Right. Like when you, when that positivity comes from the removing of negativity. It's just like light. Is light sucking the darkness in or is it, is it blasting light out? What is it? And either way, it doesn't matter. Same outcome. I, Do you like light? Be in the light. Yes, I have to, I have to say too that if, you're, if you've been asking for change, if you've been asking, asking for new directions, if you have been really hoping and, and asking for a, a new focus and a new, way, a new way to succeed and you are here on a Saturday, you're in the right place. Yeah. This is for you guys. This is why we're doing this is because we know so many of you guys want change. You want new newness. You want to start the year off right. You want to go forward. And for some people, January is that day that, that you know, and we're as close, almost as close as you can get to Jan December 30th right now. So January is that day. If you want change, if you want new directions, if you want new hope, if you want new visions, that's why you're here. And this training is for you. And it's an answer to you, your request. So just be there, be present and be around. And that's the positivity that Rory's talking about, you guys. Positivity. You're asking for things, and he said, "Be ready for it. Ask for it, and then be ready for it, or be ready for it before you even know what you're asking for." I always, when you pray, I ask for good direction, and and God knows best. So I just ask for direction, and He shoves me down the way that I think, "Oh, maybe I shouldn't be doing this," but I'm ready for it, and I'm going for it because I asked for it. And that's the same with you guys. So I want to. I'm going to wrap up this first section because I'm already over, you guys. I'm, I apologize. I'm probably going to go into the V marketing. Uh, Dina and Niall, I apologize. I'm probably going to take up your time today. So um, just, I don't know where we might have to like say no to that, but because I have a lot more to cover. No, this, um, this is, this is, this is the time we're doing this. Do what you got to do. We're all good. I, I got nods coming from everybody. We're all on board with this. Okay. Priority number one, 10. Yes. yes. Got it. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. So I wanted to, I wanted to say just to wrap up this first hour, which is like really an hour and a half, but um, then we're going to take a quick little a little, quick little session. I want Niall to add some input here. But um, if you if you don't have an an anchor or a why, you don't have a push. You don't have a reason. You don't have a you don't have anything that's going to guide and direct your life. So we need to find that. And we're going to help you in the next the next part. The next then next is this is the magical key. This is the magical key to everything because everyone says I want that magic easy button. This is it. You ready? Decide what you want and write it down. That's the, that's the only easy button you're going to get in life, friends. Decide what you want and write it down. Where do you want to go? What do you want to do? What do you want to see? Who do you want to be? What do you want to have? What do you want to share? What do you want to support? What do you want to learn? What skills do you want in life? Where, what do you want to be known for? What do, you want to, what do you want? What direction do you want to take? All that is something that you have to decide for yourself and then write it down. There is no other mystery in life, you guys. No mystery. You write it down, period. Um, and then, and it can be you guys. It, I want to say it can be simple, foolish things too. It can. 
it, it can be simple, foolish little things that, you, that are there's fun to you, they're fun and, and, and encourage you, you know, maybe, maybe something like you want this cute little, I used to you guys when I was, this is my younger days before I got a little more knowledge behind me, but it was foolish. But I'm going to share a foolish thing. I used to work in the, in the finance industry and we would put in long hours, my friends. I was working, I think, 60, 70 hours a week. Very rarely saw my children at um, that point because I, I had a why. They were my why. I needed to work. I needed to do it. Um, and so, but at the end of a session, if I had a very successful quarter or, or sometimes I, you know, I would push it to a half a year, I would buy myself a, a, a handbag, a designer handbag to, to uh, like, a, as a, like a token that this represented what I achieved. And I did it and I loved it. And it was something that I did just for myself because you guys, I think you need to have those foolish little goals just for yourself too. And I would, I would do it. I would, after an ex extensively long quarter of stress and, and pushing and achieving what my goals and my dreams, I would reward myself with a little something that I really wanted. So I'd always look at the new things, what I had coming out. And that would, that's my goal. That's what I want. And I'd work towards it. I have some other things to say that I would do too. My family, as I said, is my huge driving factor. So one of the things that I love that Rory and I have done, I'm going to talk about this more probably, I'll probably repeat myself, is that we planned vacations and trips with our family as a motivator. We, would, we planned this huge trip to Disney and we told the kiddos, we're taking you to Disney. We had seven kids, guys, seven. Now, that's not a cheap trip to do. Anybody that lives on the West Coast flying to the East Coast understands, one, the flight cost, two, the, the hotel cost, the food cost, and then the park cost. And the park costs are everything because you got the park, you got all the little things. You can't tell them no. They need to have one little, I mean, I would, you'd sit down, can you have one thing per little thing? Okay, you can do that. But you still have to buy seven things because you have seven kids. You can't tell one yes and one no. So you got to do it. So that everyone who knows that cost knows that that is such a driving factor. So we told our kids, we're taking you all to Disney. And who would who helps you get your goals better than a little child? Can we go to Disney still? Are you doing good on your goals? Oh, I'm telling you, a child will help you. They will help keep you on that direction because they're excited and motivated. So I that's something that we have done continuously is we have put in, in the map of our life. OK, we have this trip and we're going to have this goal by that deadline. That has really helped push us as well. We'll talk. I'll talk about that again. I am sure. But one thing I want to say about the writing it down because I get I got a little sidetracked there is that you guys I have these like I said I have these journals and things and notes from being very young on up that I can look back and see, and it's so important because I can see how my philosophy changed. I can see what I have learned. I can see how my values changed. I can see how my knowledge changed. I can see what my directions of my life and how they've gone. I can see my growth, my personal development. So my, my answer to you guys is just start, just start, go together with your spouse, your partner, your significant other, whatever, and write it down, write it down. I'm good. We're going to help you guys start the writing process, but I'm going to strongly encourage you guys, if you are married to get with your partner and to share, you know, share your goals so they can buy in, right? They have to buy in. And get with your kids if you want, get with your business colleagues, get with, get with your mentors and write it down. So important. Um, I'm going to quote Jim Rohn again, because, you know, my, you guys know how, that my husband is it's his mentor, but he said, um, and one of his mentors told him, Jim Rohn, is that they challenged him when he was 25 years old to become a mentor. And he said, why? They, and he goes, and I'm going to tell you why. And Jim Rohn, he said, and my 25 year old self said, you don't need to tell me why I'll be a millionaire. It'll be great. But the mentor changed his life and said, no, it's the reason why is because what it will make of you. I mean, wow. It's it, again, you guys, I have said, it's not the destination. It's the journey. So picking goals and dreams and hopes and aspirations and visions for what it will make of you. I mean, there's Jim Rohn right there. That's amazing. Guy. I'm, 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 can I throw something in here really quick? As long as you don't throw me off path. Absolutely. Okay. I'm just going to say this really <laughs> quick. When, when you pour into somebody else, the happiness that gives you is unmeasurable. Like it's, it's like truly the, 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 the truth of happiness is serving others. Like you want to be happy, help somebody else. But when you become somebody that's mentoring others and sharing it forward, I'm just going to tell you the blessings that come with that are it's 
it's it's un it's unbelievable. I we we've been so blessed, and it continues to come in, and all it does is make you want to do more. But you will do more for somebody else than you will yourself. And I think that's just the way that it's always meant to be. And look, the universe is going to do more for you than it's going to do for itself. It's going to do more for those that ask for it. Like it's there to create. We're there to create. Once you realize that, we're there to create. And not just to create for ourselves, but to create with others and help them create and pay that energy forward. It's just an awesome place to be. And, and I got to tell you, I looked at all my mentors and they're all very, very happy people. They still are. The ones that are still here on this plane are very happy. There's a reason. Happiness comes from the service to others. And when you watch, you know, like, like I watch my mentors and they'll, they'll reach out to me and they're like, Rory, you make us so proud. But, and I just tell them like you, Hey, I get to pay it forward for what you gave to me. And that, that resonates well, because that's why we do this. Like you, you want to, you want, everybody says, you know, thank you, Rory and Tanya for all you do. Okay. And if you want to, if you want to thank us, the best thing you can do, continue to pay it forward. Cause that's what we want. That's the best gratitude you can give us to help take what we've done ripple it forward so that this becomes bigger and bigger and helps more and more people. All right, Tanya, I'll mute out. <laughs> so what I was going to say was that the quote from Jim Rohn is for what it will make of you to achieve it, right? So it's, it's the destination. It, it's not the destination, excuse me, it's the journey. So in this next hour, we're going to talk about a lot of this stuff. So I want you guys to think, have goals that will stretch you, that will push you to be a better you. Have a big dream. And what, see what it makes of you to achieve it, you guys. So I want you to understand if you don't, there's that saying, which I do like it, but you know, uh, shoot for the moon. If you'll, and if you fail, you'll end up among the stars, but there's truth to that because see what you become when you, you shoot for something big and you don't quite make it there, but you, you, what, what, who are you at the end of that? What has it made you? So the greatest value in life, you guys, and this is a Jim Rohn quote. So I'm going to quote Jim Rohn right here. The greatest, the greatest value in life is not what you get. The greatest value in life is what you become, what you become, who you are at the end of that day. When you meet your maker at the end of this life, what are you going to tell him? What are you going to say? Who have you become? So ask the question when you're writing goals, what am I here for? What do I want to become? What, what is value to, valuable to me? And then we're going to set our goals to achieve them. So Wrapping up with just a couple things of this hour that's gone into an hour and a half. I apologize. But wrapping up is that um, one, don't set your goal too low. Okay. You want it to push. If it's something that you can know you could just, if you just weren't lazy, you could achieve it. No, you want to set a goal that's going to push you a bit. It's going to make you a little uncomfy. That's going to say, oh, maybe I should get up at six o'clock today and work on that one. That's what you want. So that's number one. Don't set it too low. Number two is don't join an easy crowd. Don't join the easy, the easy thing, right? You say you want something, but you're just following along with somebody else. That's the easy crowd, friends. That's not really what you want. That's not going to give you happiness at the end of the day. So you need to know where you want. What are, you need to go where the expectations are high. And this is something that I've learned through leadership and different skill set is that if you join an elite group, and you guys, triple R's where it's at. We are a small group that that we work in this in the in the U.S., but we're also international. We work in Australia now with Daniel. We're in the U.K. We're going over. We're in Brazil, Colombia, uh, Mexico, Canada. We're all. I mean, I'm sorry, Canadians. I know for y'all, that's not like you know, that's not um, international. But for us, the U.S. that is. Um, so yeah, international everywhere. We're going all over the world, right? We're, we're trying to take this and help and share. And the vision that we had for Rory and I was to help American families. And then now we've expanded it just to help families. So grow where you're expected for excellence. Excellence is expected because it will push you to be better. It'll push you to achieve more and it'll push you to contribute things that are sometimes are unheard of for you. So, you know, Rory and I demand, we have high demands. We demand high stuff for ourselves. We demand the most uh, from ourselves. And because we know that, because we know it's expected, we push for that. We push for more. So if you say, I don't need much, well, guess what? You're not going to get much. You're not going to get anything. If you say, I don't need much. I just need a little here and there. That's all you're going to get. But if you just say, I deserve greatness. I deserve that. And you push for that. You're going to get it. So, and the third and final thing I want to say on this, why I'm wrapping this up for the next little setting session is don't compromise. 
And I'm going to share a biblical story here about compromise, because I feel like this is super important to, as a, it, it opened my eyes when my, my uh, mentor, who happened to be a, pre, a Catholic priest, he put me in this perspective and he said this, he's like, Tanya, you know, the story of Judas and all, we all know, don't be a Judas, right? Um, what did he do? He sold his soul for some, some money, right? He, 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 uh, he turned Christ in. And at the end of that, he was so distraught with himself. That what did he do? He tried to give the money back and they wouldn't take it back. And what happened after that? He tried to give it all away. He still wasn't happy. At the end of that, what did he do? He ended up, he ended up taking his life because he was so unhappy with what he had done. He was so, because he compromised himself. So you need to know what your boundaries are and you need to set them loud and clear. I'm not willing to compromise this. I'm not willing to move forward to this. So in your in your your road for happiness and reaching your goals, make sure that you have a very clear outline boundaries and you do not cross those. So because the greatest I have found this is this has been told to me by so many people, the greatest source of unhappiness comes from the inside. It is not an outside source. We all think it is, but it's the inside. It's inside of us. If we are unhappy, if we're yelling at our spouse or we're, we're accusing them of things, it's because we're unhappy about that particular situation. So I find it to be quite eye-opening when you talk to someone and they have a, their spouse is yelling out about something. You're like, hmm, that's a trigger for them. So you have to look at it that way and not get pulled into that. But the greatest source for unhappiness comes from inside. So, and, and you know what, and I'm on, and Niall's going to, I'm going to have Niall jump in here too and uh, hop on this for a minute. So I'm going to take a five minute break, but I want you to, I want him to talk about this because I know he knows what I'm talking about on this is that when you start doing just a little less, when you motivate, take your goals and push them down, the unhappiness that starts to bubble up, the unhappiness and the, and the sadness and the depression and the anxiety, it starts to fester and grow. It starts with just a little bit of a cold. And then before you know it, you've got this huge thing and you're out, you're out for the count. So um, again, again, to take from the Bible, which is a lot of my revelation, you guys, um, I I'm, that's who I am. There's two words in there that I love the Bible for. And then that's it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to walk away. Now, Niall, I'm going to have you if you don't mind step in for just a few minutes. But there's two things. The Bible has a warning and it says, beware, right? Beware of negativity. Beware of false process. Beware of, 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 of misdirection. Beware, beware, beware. But they also have a promise. Behold says mm. behold if you shall ask you shall receive behold and anything that you want to think and positive and you and have a direction behold it, it's just an amazing thing and it helps direct and guide your life so i'm just going to take a quick little, a few minutes break guys to reset for the next hour nile with you if continue to talk a little bit about that if you don't mind I'll not right. at all it, it, one of the toughest things on the on earth is to follow tanya record in a training um, but I'm just going to go over some of my notes because she, gosh, uh, I don't know if you, Tanya, you probably didn't hear me, but when you were talking about uh, power couples, when you were talking about having the right partner, I yelled, amen, as loud as I could. Um, you might have heard me on, on Dina's side, but you couldn't hear me because I was muted. Um, Jim Rohn, gosh, if you guys are not subscribing to Jim Rohn, find him on Facebook, on Instagram, somewhere, find Jim Rohn. And listen to it, even if it's only five or 10 minutes a day, listen to it every day. Because what Jim Rohn talks about, as she was touching on, is personal development. Understanding our craft and what we're supposed to do every day, that stuff is good and it helps us be productive. And it'll earn us some money, but working on ourselves will earn us a lifestyle. That's what Jim Rohn talks about. Personal development will pay you way more than uh, the nuts and bolts of our craft because the personal development will help you master the nuts and bolts of our craft and just enjoy what you're doing. So my notes from while Tanya was talking, write this down too. If you fail to plan, you plan to fail. You've got to have some kind of a plan. If you fail to plan, you absolutely plan to fail. It doesn't matter what your plan is. It could be the tiniest thing or the biggest thing. You have to have some kind of a plan. Uh, uh, I didn't build houses without a blueprint. I didn't even do additions without a blueprint. I didn't work on an aircraft without a schematic. I had to know what I was doing and go in and do it. I had to have a plan 
to go in. I had to have a plan just to troubleshoot and find out what the problem was. Without a plan, if you if you fail to plan, you absolutely you got to understand. You got to believe this too. You plan to fail. You're just going to spin your wheels for a while and spin your wheels and keep spinning your wheels. And then one year, two years, three years down the road, you're going to say, well, I've had fun and made a little bit of money, but I never hit my goal. Why? Because you didn't have an absolute plan, no matter what the plan is, even if it's only $1,000 a month or 500 a month, no matter what the plan is, without a plan, you won't even hit the little ones. Um, any goal, write it down, guys. Please spend the rest of today defining your goal. What is your goal? No matter how small or how big, what is it? And write it down and make a plan. Make a plan for that goal, a plan to hit that goal. What gets me where I, this is where I want to be. What is it that gets me there? Don't get rid of all the other little things in your life and just do those things because that's what's going to get you there. That's your plan. Is it, is it increase your income? Well, what do we get paid for? Do more of those things and less of the other things. Tanya talked about, oh gosh, dream boards. How many of you have already worked on your dream board? I have, Dina has, we've got it all. We've got a lot of it written down. We're going to start cutting. Excellent, Beatrice. We've got it all written down. We know exactly what our income goals are. We know what the piece of property looks like. We know what the house looks like and we're going to build on it. We have it all written down in detail what the outdoor kitchen likes, what the screen and porch, I mean, pool looks like in the backyard. We have all those little details written down. Because if you just say, yeah, yeah, I want a new house with a good sized backyard, well, that's not detailed. I want an extra, I want more money. Well, that's not detailed. Write the number down. I want this much per week or this much per month. Write that number down. And if you say it out loud to anybody, it gets even bigger. Now your commitment level goes up. As soon as you tell someone else, I want to make $10,000 a month, and you say that in front of them, your commitment level goes up subconsciously without you even thinking about it. Dream boards, I'm going to be, I'm going to be honest with everybody. I was not a believer in those when I first heard, you know, get the little pictures and glue them on a big poster board and hang it up in your office. And I, I actually giggled a little bit. Um, I thought it was silly. I honestly did until I did my first one. And then I wasn't just taking, you know, trivial little things and posting and sticking them on a board. I was taking dream items and putting it on a board. And I didn't put a lot on my board because I didn't want a bunch of little frivolous stuff on my board. I wanted real goals on my board. So the perk, the people I was building them with that first time, they had a ton of stuff on their board. I only had like eight things on my board. And guess what? I got all eight of those things. And every time I wrote something down or I pinned something on the cork board up above my computer, I got it. And sometimes I didn't even really want it, but I pinned it up there and I ended up getting it. I remember one time a uh, BMW R1200 road, uh, motorcycle. I seen, uh, I got a postcard in the mail and I went, oh, that's really a good looking bike. And I pinned it on my board. I didn't know, I didn't really want it. I just wanted to go look at it. But I pinned it on my board. And guess what I got for my birthday that year? A BMW R1200 motorcycle. It just, it came to me through somebody else, but because it was pinned on my board, it came to me. I was actually given a BMW R1200 motorcycle for my birthday. And that was when I was living in Virginia. Rory Chan, you probably remember pictures of that bike. Um, yeah, I, every time I wrote something down or hung it up, it materialized. Whether it was the house on the water in Virginia or, you know, the back to unbelievable backyard that had the swimming pool and everything that every kid in the neighborhood wanted. So my kids and all their friends would always be right there and I could keep a good eye on them. And they had the time of their life every single day. Whatever it was, I, I achieved it. Anything I hung up and anything I wrote down. But if you say it out loud to somebody else, it's good. Now, when you're working on your goal list, Start with the tiniest little thing. Um, I, I just went and bought a total gym because I'm going to start working out again. I said I was going to start working out again. We went and got a total gym so I could work out again. Because I know I don't have time to go to the gym every day. So I'm going to have a total gym right on the other side of my desk here. And I'm going to work out once or twice a day every day. But I knew if I didn't go get a total gym, that wasn't going to happen. 
So I went and got to told them now it's going to happen because I'm not going to stare at it and feel guilty every day that I'm not working out. So write down the tiniest little things. What do you want to achieve? What's going to make your life better? What's going to make you give you more peace, right? Because that peace is what's going to help you be more productive and then hit all your other goals. And the tinier they are, the better, all the way up to the big ones. Because every time you check one off, something happens in our subconscious that checking them off is a real feel good thing. And when you look at your list and it's got six check marks on it, you feel good about what you've been doing in your productivity. So write down everything from the tiniest thing to the biggest thing and then check them off as you do them. Um, just check marks are a feel good thing. And that whole power couple thing. Wait, first I want to talk about we're always talking about the darkness and the light. And that's something that I've been studying recently. So I'm still going to finish looking for the camera or the microphone that Rory has hiding in my office somewhere. Because <laughs> every time I'm doing something or thinking about something, he seems to do uh, a training on it or, or talks about it within the next three days. So there's a microphone or a camera here somewhere. I'm going to find it, Rory. The <laughs> What I read and what I'm focused on, and it's the same thing, just a little bit different, different person said it. Darkness is the lack of light. Darkness was the lack of light. So Tanya, when I pray, God told me, shine, shine, be as bright as you can. Focus on the light and it pushes out the darkness. Absolutely. Darkness is just a lack of light. Negativity and positive energy, the more I focus on, what do we say? Be grateful every single day. Be grateful. Write down the things that you're grateful for because the more you think about and fill your head with the things you're grateful for the less room there is the less energy given to the things the negative things in your life darkness is just a lack of light evil is just the lack of god it's that's that's how it all works right and the power couple thing <clears throat> i won't go too much into that other than when you're on the right path or you have the right partner Everything seems to go easy. Everything seems to go smooth. Everything works out. If you're not on the right path or have the right partner in your business, in your business now, don't everybody run out and get a divorce because your husband's not, or your wife is not saying, I love what you're doing there. <laughs> if they don't love what you're you doing, clarified. then, you know, yeah, <laughs> keep your business separate from their business. Don't, don't, don't think about getting separated. But if, if they're involved in your business, if, you, if you're on the same page, and you're on the right path, everything go, Everything is easy. Nothing is difficult. If you're on the wrong path, everything is difficult. And having the wrong partner in your business will make things difficult. So if you, if you, uh, I, you can be in love with somebody, but don't involve them in your business. Keep your business separate from their business and then enjoy your together time without business. Um, but yeah, man, having the right partner, Tanya, yeah. what? what a difference everything just seems different yep <laughs> um, yeah so it was hard to follow you that's for sure but i did have that many notes well okay. thank you i appreciate that yeah you did look at that <laughs> but i just i want to say with niall talking about the partner you guys i also if, even if your partner isn't on board what you're doing here success generates belief so even if you're not with somebody success generates belief so if they, if you're working hard and you're starting to achieve and you're starting to move and you're starting to achieve your goals and your dreams, and even if they're not on board with the financial, I mean, with the work side, when they see your success, they will believe and push forward with you. And they'll change the, the trajectory of your marriage for 100%. So I believe 100% that that is it. Niall looked for somebody that was had the same trajectory, the same visions, the same aspirations, the same goals as him, and he found it. And that's that's what made it for him. And I then, prayed for that. Yeah. Daily. And the same thing with, my, like I said, I've said many times with myself, my husband was in this and I was not as what, as much. I mean, you guys, I, 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 I mean, everyone, I think, I don't know if everybody here knows this story. My first time meeting my husband was at a network marketing event. So it's like, you know, I've been in this since I was 18 and could sign up. So I've been in this industry for that long and the, and the experiences and the growth that we've learned. I really feel like we went to um, university together. Like we went through it, we, the hard knocks of, of and we, we got a degree in, in uh, network marketing. And that's really what we've learned. And so um, anyway, but that being said, like, even though I, I wasn't on path with some of the things he wanted to do, I just believed in him and I trusted in him and his success generated my belief and my, more, my ability to help want to go and go forward more. So even if you guys don't feel like that's where you are right now in your life, 
you know, just keep moving forward, keep achieving your dreams and, and you will see success. So Tanya, I think we're telling everybody to get to an event and meet another single person because that's where you're going to find the <laughs> either way, get to the event. She met the love of her okay. life in an event. I let, met the love of my life in an event. You never know what could happen at the events. <laughs> yes, that's that's true. I met met my husband at an event. <laughs> no. Trying to recruit each other. Anyway, <laughs> we're good. <laughs> Who won? I did. <laughs> Thank you. Anyway, we're going to get back to seriousness, guys. Thank you, Niall. I appreciate that. I was able to have a little bit of a break. And now we're going to get on to our second hour, which is our goal assessment. And then we'll go into our vision boards after that. Um, I'm, I'm trying to I'm trying to push forward here, guys, to, to uh, move on. I have such a time schedule thing in my brain. So I'm trying to like, it's okay. Relax, chill. We're good if we're over it. But um, so we're going to do a goal assessment. So I'm going to talk to you guys about our top, the top, I, I, you know, I, I've done this many times. I have, I have done so many different um, retreats, so many different goal things, so many different trainings. And it really, to me, breaks down to like eight different topics, which really can be divided into like, so as a young child, I was taught like of a triangle of our goals. And it was always God at the top, family, and your, your, your income or your ability to provide for or care for your family. That was how it was taught. And then from there, I've, as I've gotten older, I've broken it down a little bit more from subcategories, but really the truth of it is those are your three, your financial, your ability to cover your, your, my husband calls it, calls it cover your net, right, Rory? Cover your net. <laughs> They're busy to, 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 why do you, I think he uses that because of the squirrel analogy. They're going and getting all their nuts and putting them away, storing them for winter. But that ability, the ability to have a relationship with a higher power and your family. Well, it. Uh, I'm just I'm just going to quantify it here. I it, I call it you know cover your nut. It does come from the squirrel analogy. But if you don't like the thing about it is you think about a squirrel right. If they don't have food to last the winter, they're out there frantically trying to do it, and they'll make bad decisions and take risks where that that eagle sees them and they die. The the squirrels that last are the ones that prepared properly. They didn't. It, there's just a thing to that. Okay. And I'm not saying that everybody's going to die, but financially, you're if you're you're going to make really bad decisions and. And and if you can't make your bills at the end of the month, you make bad decisions, right? You you rob from Peter to pay Paul. You sacrifice things that you probably couldn't sacrifice, right? And then and then your power gets shut off. And then and 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 I'm just gonna go over this. Like your power gets shut off. Now you got to pay a reinstatement fee, and then and maybe you, now you got to prepay. Who knows what you you put yourself in a compromise because you didn't live up to your obligations as they want you to, right? All because you weren't prepared. There's so many ways to make income. There's so many ways to, to make it better. And, and we're, we're here to teach all that. So you, you make that better. But if you're not covering your nut, you make dumb decisions that have costs. Um, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say something that I had a mentor teach me. Like, Rory, you're being stupid. And I hope you know that stupidity comes with a price. You're going to pay a stupid tax. And I was like, what are you talking about? You don't pay your credit card on time. You get a late fee. Stupid tax. You don't pay, you don't pay a utility fee and they shut you down. You pay a reinstatement, stupidity tax, right? And, and now if your credit gets bad, now you got to pay prepayments, stupidity tax, stupidity tax. It yeah. costs more money to be stupid than people realize. In fact, they're so stupid they don't realize it, right? Like if you just like figure things out, everything is better, right? When you comply to the, the, the financial process, things are just better, right? You get rewarded. You have a better credit score, you don't pay as much interest. You have a better credit score, you get more capital, right? You get things. And, and I think that's something here. Uh, I'll just put this in a perspective is Tanny and I give you absolute awesome capital to come in here and grow. We fund your marketing. We've already given you capital. We've already given you a credit score of, of, 10, of, of 10 million. Come in and go. But the nut is a crazy thing. And when you understand, I got to cover my nut. So make, make th choices. But once your nut is covered, now you see things and you can start creating wealth and creating more because you can cover what you need. That's the thing about it. But think about it. When squirrel, once they have their stuff in there, they can make better decisions, right? And they also can be prepared for when the other squirrel families need, need help. And they, they'll come in there. Like there, there's, there's a wisdom to it. And those are the ones that live longer. And they don't put themselves out there in risk way unnecessarily from the eagles, coyotes, right? Okay. Back to you. So the reason that I want him to cover that was because I feel like um, everybody came to this to Triple R for that reason, pretty much, right? Financially, that's what you came for. And my belief is that 
if you get in here, you follow, you work the system. If you actually do what we're says to do, you will find financial success. And then my job is to come in now and to help you with the other areas of your life and to find balance. Okay. So um, I want you to find balance in all aspects of your life. And I believe it's, I call it the wheel of balance actually. And then I found um, a company that kind of taught that a little bit and I'm creating my own goal setting and things. And we're going to have that available in January for those who come to that event. But I'll have some handouts and stuff for you guys. But um, it's it's really like, it's like a wheel. And when one of the spokes is broken or not quite there, you have that bump, right? You'll go around and bump, 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 bump. You ever ridden on a flat tire before? You have that bump. Um, that's what it is. And so there's all these different aspects of your life that help cause balance and wholeness in your life. And when one of them's offset, it depends on which one is more offset that's going to cause that bump, that cause that issue. And most of the people, it is financial. And then the rest of it is where, like I said, I, I come in and help here. And we're going to go over those so that I'm going to talk to you guys about the eight different topics. As I, I started, like I said, it was actually God, learning, and and, and money were the, the, the topics there. God and family and learning and your, your wisdom, your self-growth, personal growth, and then wellness, all that. And then your financial wellness, your financial growth, your your um, education, like all that. The kind of the, That was the triangle that I was taught with my father. And then I branched out and separated it with eight. So you have personal growth, fun and recreation, work and learning, family and relationships, health and wellness, spiritual growth, financial growth, financial issues, financial goals, and then your physical environment. And all of those cause the wheel of your life and they cause you to be either broken or they cause you to work, work um, to be a smooth ride, right? And there's no, you guys, I want to make sure that I say this very clearly. There's no wrong thing. It's okay if you're weak in an area. I'm significantly weak in one area that I feel. And I'm working on that. I've been working on that for the last half of this year. And I'm working on it into next year because I want to be better in that area. And I see the weakness in that area and I want to make it better. So um, with that, you know, and so there's nothing wrong with it. Like I said, it's just this assessment that we're going to take now. Um, and it's going to help you guys to achieve your dreams and your visions in that, in that direction and help you to, to balance out your life to smoothness. So we're going to cover these one by one. I'm going to give you guys a definition of each of these, and then we're going to take an assessment test, and then we're going to go into vision boards. So number one, personal growth. Personal growth is a process of developing new skills, attitudes, and a actions, or I love this one, reactions. Guys, that's so phenomenal to me. Because personal growth, it's not like, like I have said so many times, it's not it's not what happens to you. It's how you react. So personal growth is about new, developing new reactions. How are you going to react to actions? So that's personal growth. And the next one is fun and recreation. And these are, these are uh, obviously some, I don't know if you guys know this, but they're, they're definitions that I have kind of like de developed along the way to put into place here. So you have fun and recreation. These are activities that people choose to do to refresh their mind and bodies. So it's not just like, I'm not telling you to go out and like spend your day on a, on a, spend your whole life, like, you know, in fun recreation mode. Absolutely not. But it's something that you're going to do. Like we, we call it the reset, refocus, recommit, right? That's where RR 247 came from to reset, refocus, recommit 24, seven hours a day, 24, seven, seven days a week. So that's what it is. So that's what, what you're choosing to do. When you won't, so when we're working on goals that are fun and recreation, we're working on activities that we're choosing to do to refresh our mind and bodies. Okay, and so then we have the next one. The third one is work and learning. So this is how I, 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 I paraphrase this as professional goals to achieve success, long-term and short-term skills to improve your competency and focus. So milestones and mental targets to keep you focused. I'm going to repeat this because I see some of you guys writing, so I'll repeat it. <laughs> but it's professional goals to achieve success, long-term and short-term skills to improve your competency and focus. So they're milestones and mental targets to keep you on track, keep you focused. That's what you're going to be looking at when we're, when we're setting goals for that. So the next area is uh, health and wellness. And that is, and I love this one because everybody thinks, oh, that means I need to work out. That means I need, to... no, that's not what it means. What it means is to become aware of and make choices towards a state of complete physical, mental, and social well being. Okay. So it's to become aware of, you have to become aware to make a change. So become aware of, to make choices towards 
a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being. And then the practice of daily habits to thrive, just not to survive. So those are very important. So, and then the next section is spiritual growth. And this will, this will be a very, all of these I think are very personal, but this one is more so because God is such a higher power and it's such a, it's such a belief. It's, it's such a, I, I mean, people believe, but I don't have a belief in God. I have a knowledge and I love and, and, and respect and, 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 you know, want to be like him. So it's very personal for me, but personal growth is learning more about leaning into God. Okay. Repeat that again. It's learning more about leaning into God, trusting him, developing a relationship with God or a higher power, but for me, it's God. So developing that relationship, that guidance, that counsel, that mentorship, that love, and then, and, and leaning into him and, and learning to trust him. Um, so that's what that spiritual growth is. And then you have financial and that is e evaluating your day spending, your daily spending, your income, your debts, and how to save, spend, pay off, and exceed more than you want to. So I'm going to say that again, evaluating your, your everyday spending, your income, your debts, um, how to save, how to spend, how to pay off, and how to achieve more financially than you have before. So that's like, it's like a whole bunch of all rolled into one right there. And then your personal environment. Is this is the eighth one, and that is to me this is a very big factor. I've talked about this a lot, you guys. It's about your your knowledge, your your experiences, who's in your environment, but it's also your physical environment is also your external surroundings and conditions in which we live, the level of of um, unkept or um, unkept or kept in ambient noise, light, air quality, functionality of our surroundings. So how are you working? How are you focusing? What's your surroundings with you? Are you coming into a mess? Are you coming into cleanliness? And I was one that was raised cleanliness is next to godliness. And my father instilled that with an iron fist. He was a, he was a, he was in the service. So he brought that white glove test to the point in my, my upbringing. So I, I, I know very well about that. Sean Flaming, you can probably share that one. <laughs> um, yeah, it was, I mean, we had to have the corners tucked. We had to have the dust, no dust around. I mean, he was serious about that. So anyway, those are our, those are our um, sections for goal setting. So we're going to do an assessment. I've done this before. I'm going to share you guys, and we're going to kind of go over it this right now. So I'm going to share screen and uh, make sure y'all can see this. Can you everybody see this? Good. Okay. So this is what I like to call the life compass. And these are the, the sections that I kind of shared with you guys. And um, what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to take a little quiz, and then I'm going to have you guys evaluate yourselves at the end. And you can see it's supposed to look like this wheel down here at the bottom where it, the smaller wheel where you can see where it's filled out. And so you can kind of see how full you are um, to completing that that circle. And I do want to say, you guys, I do not believe in being a 10. So these are scored one to 10. I don't believe in being a 10 because that means you're perfect and no one is perfect but Christ. So there's always something to work on. But what there is, is there's areas where you need to focus more. Like I have said, there's an area of this that I need to focus more, that I'm focusing more on, um, that I have other ones that are very full, that I, I feel like I've achieved what I wanted to in those. Doesn't mean I'm not setting goals in there because I absolutely am. I believe in setting goals in every section and continue to work to be a better you. But we're going to take a little test here, you guys. And you're going to keep your score from one. I think it's one to, it's one to, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there's eight is the top that you can get. So when we're going to score, so eight would be the high. And these are the questions. I'm going to read them out to you guys. And I just want you guys to check, like make little, you know, little marks on your book. So you have a number for how many that you hit, what, what number you hit, right? So my basic needs are taken care of. And see there on a, a scale of one to 10, which, which one is it? And then you're going to give yourself a number. And then you guys, the, the best thing is what comes first to your mind. What pops in, go with that. I generally feel happy and fulfilled. I have a positive attitude and outlook on life. I'm going to make this a little bigger so y'all can see it. Um, I give myself grace for limits and imperfections. And I regularly take time for planning, reflecting, and self-care. I am comfortable spending time alone. I, this is amazing. I met some people that can't, that don't. 
<clears throat> and they can't stop talking. You got to be able to be in your own self and be quiet. There are hobbies and interests I engage in regularly. <clears throat> and there are personal goals and projects that I want to achieve and complete. So you're going to give yourself a score one to 10 in here, and then you're going to average it out and get yourself a personal school, score. Now I'm going to go, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm going to go pretty fast through this, you guys. So this is not something that we're going to spend a lot of time on because, you know, we have to, we're going to move on to some other things. So <clears throat> it'll be here. And again, if you guys are coming to the training in January, you'll have some of this in hand. We can go, we're going to go over it in more in depth and spend some more time. And I'm going to help you guys make goals in, in certain areas. So <clears throat> always go to an event if you guys can. That's what I say. So we're going to go to the next one here. Fun and recreation. I take regularly planned vacations and or time off. I create moments for the rest, for rest and rejuvenation. I give myself permission to have fun without feeling guilty. I have fun in ways that serve my highest and best self. <clears throat> Excuse me. I reward myself when I accomplish a goal. That's what I was talking about before. I do things on a regular basis that bring me joy. I spend enough time with people I enjoy. My social interactions are enjoyable, meaningful, and fun. Well, then that's that work. You guys will give yourself a score later. You're going to kind of do your, they'll fill out your like little wheel there. We're going to go into work and learning. And then we're going to score ourselves here. It says, I am enthusiastic about and engaged in what I am doing for life, for my life's work. I am fulfilled. Oh, I'm, I'm going to slow down. Dina, just tell me to slow down if I'm going too fast, okay? I am fulfilled by the work I do and believe it adds value. I can tell you my husband scores himself a 10 in this one. He believes he's adding value to your lives. He really believes that. He wants you guys to have purpose and direction. So I feel very blessed and happy to be on that path with him. Um, my work is a true fit for my purpose, strengths, and personal gifts. And again, you're just writing down a number, guys, and then moving on. Um, I, I am contributing to the work and the way I'm contributing to the work the way I desire. I have po positive interactions at work. I expand my skills through continued growth and development. I have an action plan to support the growth and success I desire. I am curious, I'm curious and eager to learn. So that's going to be your score. Again, you're going to average all these out. We'll go to the next section. And then this will be later, guys. We'll be filling out your little compass. But here is your family and, re and relationships. Number one, I am present with my family, friends, and or significant other. And you guys, I want to clarify on this one because I think this is so important. So I'm going to say this right here. It's probably one of the only ones that probably will do this. But being present means you put your phone down. Okay. You're not scrolling social media while you're talking. Do you know how much I hate talking to somebody and having them be on their phone and then they go, what was that? Oh, no, honey, you ain't worth my time. So it's like you have to be focused. If you love somebody, you're going to be present when they're talking to you. You're going to feel their energy and be connecting. So just you're being present. So that's that one. Number The next one, I share mutual love, respect, and relationships with my loved ones. Oh, appreciation, excuse me. I, I share mutual love, respect, and appreciation with my loved ones. Next is I have healthy boundaries. That one's a hard one for moms or dads that have grown kids. That one's a hard one, I'm telling you. Next one is I have free, I am free from toxic relationships. I experience vulnerability and intimacy in my personal relationships. Are you able to be you? That's really what that is. 
I have a sense of community and belonging where I live, work, and play. I have clarity and peace in the areas I feel like I'm lacking. I definitely do. That's what I'm saying, you guys. That's what it's all about. Where you're lacking, knowing it, working towards it. <clears throat> I am actively designing what I want from my relationships. So that's it, guys. I hope you guys are being quick because truthfully, it's the quickness. That's what you need. You don't need to overthink it, <clears throat> go into everything. You just need to be quick on your numbers. And then you're going to fill out your circle. But the thing is, the great thing about this is when you guys come in January, you'll have this. And, and then you can see where you're lacking. And that's where you're going to, we're going to focus your goals around which area of these that you're lacking. Someone's talking. I don't know who. But anyway, we're going to the next one. So here we go. Health and wellness. Um, I take care of my physical, mental, and emotional health. I eat well and drink plenty of water. I get a, sub, a significant, a, a, yeah, significant amount of sleep. So, so sufficient. I get a su su sufficient. I don't know. I can't say that. A sufficient amount of sleep. <laughs> Next is I have a regular exercise routine. I have a healthy image, healthy, a healthy self image. I was going to say a healthy image of myself, but the same thing, healthy self image. I have healed from any stress or traumas I've experienced. Remember what I talked about being a survivor. That's what I'm talking about right here. What'd you learn from it? Let's move on. Let's let that go. Don't need to carry that anymore, guys. You don't. I feel strong in body, heart, and mind. And then I am, I'm equipped to handle life's events with strength and vitality. And that was your score. Then we're going to score those later. Go on to your uh, spiritual and personal growth is the next section. And I have identified what my own definition of spirituality is. So this is the only area that I'm going to say that I strongly disagree with you guys, because Again, it's a personal situation. I know that, but you guys, there is a higher power. And if you don't, there's even studies that show when you believe in a higher power, your happiness is so much more. Um, your success is better. Everything is better. So I don't believe you define your own spirituality. You, you just accept what is. And I, even those have said to me, I don't believe in God, but they believe in evil. So what is it? You got to, you believe in something more than yourself. So if you're not there, I highly suggest that you talk to Andy Perryman. He's here and just, he won't, he won't, he's such a sweetheart. He will not dissuade you. He'll just encourage you and uplift you and help maybe share thoughts with you of a different direction. So I'd highly suggest that if you do not have a belief in God, um, but that is where we're going to go there. But the next one is I engage in regular spiritual practices. The next is I invest time and energy into my personal and spiritual growth. Oh, and in case you guys didn't understand, this is really just spiritual to me. Personal growth is the top one. This one is the spiritual growth. So I don't put them together. They're separate to me. Um, next, my words, thoughts, and actions are congruent with my beliefs and values. What you think, are you acting the way that, you're, that you think? Next, I seek to learn new things about myself and others. Next, I feel clear and connected to what my guiding principles are. And this would be your belief system, guys. What are your guiding principles? They're laid out pretty good for you in the Bible. They're great. There's some great principles in there. But um, what are they and are you connected to them? Next is I practice gratitude regularly. If this is not a daily thing, you guys, well, you, that needs to be something you do, practicing regularly. And the last one is I found peace and forgiveness where there has been pain and suffering. I believe a lot of our spiritual path is about pain and suffering because we don't see, we don't see God as a loving, as a loving father that wants our success and our benefit in our life and our direction. We see them as like rules and regulations and suppression, and it's not what it's meant to be. And if you think that way, of course, you're not going to like it. 
but you have, we have, we, and we create our own pain and suffering. But if we allow Christ to take it and he carried it already for us. So if we allow that and ask for forgiveness and move on, a lot of that goes. So if you're not, if you're not in a, in a, in a place where you found forgiveness for what's happened or anything past, this is an area that I really suggest you focus on. It will help with a lot of things. So next on to financial is I have financially and economically, I have financial and economic security. Next, I have a wealthy relationship with, I mean, I have a healthy, <laughs> I have a healthy relationship with money. <laughs> Rory, I have a wealthy one, I guess. I'm, I'm, I don't know where I'm coming from in that. That was real silly. Um, next, I spend my money responsibly and live within my means. I have a financial plan for the future and contribute to it regularly. Next, I believe in my ability to acquire wealth. Um, the next one is I am implementing the systems and skills needed to meet my financial goals. You're following the systems that we have here. We're following all that to meet your goals. Um, next, I have streamlined and automated my financial dealings. And last is I have a favorable, favorable credit rating. And then the last little section here would be our physical environment. And the, the first one here is my, my home, car, and workplace are clean and safe. I was always taught that if you got up in the middle of the night and you had to get out, you could do it quickly and safely. That's what this means. Middle of the night, you could run out and not trip and kill yourself over something. Uh, the next one is my physical environment is free from clutter and excess. Next, I enjoy spending my time in my personal spaces. There's a little story time here, guys. I had a friend that would come over to my house because it was clean and hers wasn't. And she liked to be at my house, so she'd be there all day. I'm like, why are you here? Your house is clean. Well, go clean yours. Get out. <laughs> Next, I feel organized. And next, I am up to date on necessary repairs and maintenance. Next, there are physical areas where I can go to recharge and experience comfort. Next one, my environment, my environments support having positive energy, good habits, and personal success. And then lastly, I feel supported in the management of my home. And then you guys at the end of that, this is where I'm going to give you guys a few minutes to kind of tally up your score and to pick a number where you were at in each section. And then just write the number down for each for each section. Let me just make this a little small so you can see this, the, the titles there. So you have a, a, um, a number for each of those sections. So that'll help you as you assess yourself to move forward to making um, and make it and achieving goals. So now I want to say, as you guys are telling these up, I'm going to chat with you all. I'm going to stop share here. Oh, actually, I'll leave it out for just a minute so you guys can tell me. This is not dream board stuff. These are just regular goals. We're going to talk about dream boards here in just a second, but this is regular goal setting stuff right here that we're talking about. This is just giving yourself an assessment of your life, where you're lacking so that you can move forward. If you're not willing to give yourself the hard answers, nobody will. So you have to give yourself the hard answers, where you're lacking. And you guys, I know y'all know. I know you can put your finger on one of these areas and say, okay, I, that's where I'm, I suck at this. And that's okay. Because now you know you can take action and you can move. What's not okay is knowing you suck at it and just staying there. That's what's not okay. So it, it's okay to suck. You get you go from suck to less sucky to better to good. Great. And that's that's the steps and processes that you that you need to go. So it's okay. It's okay to it's okay to suck. <laughs> I sure do in a couple of these. I need help. So it's okay. I'm gonna work on I'm working on those. I'm pushing myself. I'm I'm trying to achieve better things. So I'm gonna stop sharing this and then we're gonna talk a little bit here about um, about setting goals for yourself. So when you're setting goals for yourself, you're gonna know the area. And again, you guys, I'm doing, I'm gonna go more in depth in January and break things down. So you guys are going to that a mastermind. This is all about masterminding guys. All this is, is about what we're doing to make ourselves better. 
right? You're going to set goals. And then well, the problem is with setting goals is a lot of people set that goal, that pie in the sky, and they think, oh, it's too big and they stop believing in it. But if you set a goal and then you map out actionable steps, it helps you to achieve it. It keeps it in, it keeps it in reality and it keeps it in bite sizes, right? So what I do when I set a goal for a year, because I have goals that are year, five year, 10 years, 20 years, I have goals down the road. So I, right now we're talking about setting goals for the, for the year and the vision board is going to be those other years, those things, right? But the goals for this year, you're going to set it, okay, by the end of, in the next, the end of next December, okay? You guys, I'll, I'll take a moment, close your eyes for a second. What's your perfect day? Where do you want to be? What do you want to have? Those are your goals. Now you're going to take that and you're going to break it down into quarters. Okay. So for instance, I'm just going to go with the money thing here because money is what we're, what we're doing with triple hour. We're trying to focus on your pocketbook first and then we'll help you with the other things. So I'm going to tell you this example. If I want to make X, so this is a great thing too, when you're doing a financial goal is you have to, you make a list of like, um, what house do I want to have? And then you say, what's the mortgage payment? What car do I want? What does the car payment look like? What vacations do I want? How much do I need to save? To, how much do I need to pay for that vacation? Okay. Maybe you want to leave your job. What money, do, what income do you need to replace for that job? These will all give you that perfect day in a year, like perfect day. All right. So if you, that's what you want and you're going to break it all down. So say, I mean, we're going to do this just for money's sake because it's easy to divide into quarters. We're going to say that looks like 12 grand a month to you. There's a lot of you guys, it's like, whoa, but some of you, it's not that much. So 12 grand a month, you want to make 12 grand a month in a year. So you can achieve those, those dreams. That means in three months, you're going to break it down that you're going to make three grand a month. You see what I'm saying here, guys? I'm just breaking it down into achievable steps. Then you're going to push yourself to actions that will get you to three grand a month. And in six months, you're going to, you'll have, you'll be at, at, at six grand. At nine months, you'll be at nine grand. And then at 12 months, you'll be at 12 grand. It'll push you. You'll have actionable steps. And I just use the numbers because it's easy to break down to, to achieve. Okay. Maybe you have a goal. If you have a goal that your main thing in, in, in the next year is you, you've given your notice at your job. What's the income that you want to, what you want to replace? Now, here's the kicker, guys. This is what I'm here to help you with. Are you doing the actions that are going to get you your outcome? Because I, a lot of you guys aren't. Anybody that I talk to that says, hey, I'm doing this and it's not working for me. And then when I start to talk to them, because I know they're not being honest with themselves. It's not me they're not being honest with. They're not being honest with themselves. Are you, are you doing your, your posting ads? Are you doing your, fill it in guys. Are you doing, are you, are you, are you uh, doing your V marketing? Are you doing your outbound calls? Are you, are you doing your PB, are you working on building your PBS? And then are you working on posting it for Google AdSense? Are you, are you joining the study groups? Are you afraid to pick up the phone? Because a lot of people are, they think they can't achieve it because they don't want to pick up that phone. So they're not going to achieve the success. It's going to make you uncomfy, guys. If you want to, do, if you want to be comfortable, then keep doing what you're doing. You're never going to achieve anything. But if you want to achieve things, it's going to be uncomfy. Get used to it. That's where you grow. It's where you're put under pressure and you grow and you become better. So if you want to achieve it, are you doing this? Are you, are you learning and practicing and training to get the education that you need to grow and to continue on? You got in you and the, and the edge of the best education is just doing it. Is your, are you with your instructor? Are you joining the study groups? Are you doing the V marketing training? Are you doing outbounds? Are you starting to recruit the training practices? Are you becoming an instructor? Are you working towards those steps? All these are all things to ask yourself. It's a very simple system truthfully, to be honest. And Rory has spent a lot of time outlining it, re-outlining it, making things better, making it easier for you all to do to, to achieve financial success. Those of you guys who are not, it's just because you haven't done it yet. You've been, you've been preparing to do it. And that's the comfy stage is preparing to do it. Some of you want all your ducks in a row. Some of you want all the information. Guess what? You're never going to have all the information. You just don't. You just look it up and ask it. You know, that's why I said, let us do the heavy lifting. We have all the training, all the edge, all the stuff that we have for you guys is to help you with the heavy lifting. You don't know the comp plan, have them join the opportunity calls. You don't know how to, you don't know how to give direction for your instructors, have them join the instructor call. The students, new students, new people coming in, want to get, get uh, plugged in, want to know what's going on, want to know the new changes. That's there for you. 
You want to know about brain food education, the brain food opportunity, the homeschool, all that? We have that call for you too. You want to know about the, the PBS and, and starting over and the different processes and all that? We have a Thursday call for you. We even have a wine and dine call once a month for you guys. And then we have the education and training on Saturday. We focus more on different things of the of our PBS or different things that we're learning on. And then we have the DTC hour. We're learning different pairings, different things there. We're going to go and we're, that's going to be a whole different thing next year. I'm excited for it. And then we have, what do we have? The marketing training where we teach you guys how to be successful. We have it all for you. Are you following the steps? Are you doing what you're supposed to do to be successful? Are you following the path that was lined out for you to help you guys achieve it? That is something you guys need to take a hard look at and only you can answer that. So, I mean, it's just, it's just been, a, it's a lot. And that's, and that's why, that's why it's spelled out so specifically. That's why we have so much training, so much edge help, so much love and support behind it is because it's there for your success. That's, that's what it's there for. So all that is going to help you guys set regular goals to meet your achievement, to make what you want and, and, to, and to join those rewards. Next up, we're going to talk about vision boards and there's different ways to, to address this. So there's all different ways to do it. I like doing mind maps and I just write it down because I believe in writing. I was taught, write it down, write it down, write it down, write it down. So I was, that's what I was taught over and over again. So I do a mind map, I'll go, okay. This is the person I want to be. This is what my, my year, my perfect day in a year looks like. And I'll put that in my circle. I know y'all have done this before. I'll write that in my circle. That's my perfect day. And then I'm going to branch out into the eight different areas. Okay. And how do I get to that perfect day? And I'm going to set goals. And some, like I said, are going to be more pressing than others. Maybe it's financial. Maybe it's personal. Maybe it's your environment. Maybe you can't think and focus because your home's too cluttery and messy. You know, I don't know. Maybe you're been sick and your and your wellness isn't right, and you're going to work on that and be fo focusing on a changing your changing your lifestyle and your diet. I don't believe in diets; I believe in lifestyle changes. So, changing your lifestyle, you're going to be doing different things, cutting out sugar, cutting out you know processed foods. Those are things we all know we really should do, but it's hard to do. So, cutting out that to get better, to get healthier. Uh, maybe we're going to maybe like I said, it's it's we don't have that place to reset and to refocus our direction. So we're going to plan a trip in, in three months to a year or whatever. Or, and we're going to get that. Maybe that's what we want to work on. Whatever it is you want to work on. That's what, that what you guys are going to focus on. But the vision board is going to be those big goals. Right. So that's what I have. The this is what my perfect day is in a year. This is what I want it to be. And then we're going to branch out and write goals. And that's what it's going to be. That's how I've always done it. I've kind of just you know, just taking some time to myself and kind of written it down and, and had it like that. And then newer in my life, I'd say about maybe 10 years, I've done it with pictures and I do it where I can put it and I, um, or I can see it. So you can put it up on, on the wall or you can put it on the fridge. You can put it on your bathroom mirror, whatever you want, wherever you want to see that will, will motivate you. I've, I've had some people say, put it on your computer screen, but my computer screen, it, the, the background is never up so that it helps me zero. I always have my my screens always up with different pages, different things. I, so I never see my my screensaver. So it helps me zero. But what I do have is a notebook and I have it opened all the time. So I like to do a full page notebook page that I can see in there and I use as a bookmark. And I have it up. So when I'm opening up to start writing my notes or my thoughts or my scribbles, whatever I need to do, for whatever I want to get out of my brain, I see that. And so I do a pictures. And I do it that size. So whatever size frame that you want. I've done this before and I have some other trains and that I have, I've done a couple different ways with stickers, with pictures, you can use magazines, you can print photos, whatever you want, but you got to put those in there, whatever that looks like for you. And that is how, that is what, how you create a vision board. So I've done it with, on, on posters before I've done it on um, canvases. I've done it anyway, but I, for me, what works best for me, like I said, is that full page. I think it's a five by eight bookmark that I just, I laminate it. I, I print it out. I laminate it and stick it in my book. So when I open up my book, my planner, my book, whatever, I see it. I see it every single day. And I see my children or I see my grandchildren and taking them to Disney or taking them to Universal or going on a trip, taking, taking, I want to take some of my kids to Mexico, to our resort. I see that so that I know that's a goal for me. I want to achieve that. This is the house that I want to have this or I, or not. This is the car that I want. Whatever those are, that's going to be for you guys. That's going to be what that vision board is about. And I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this section because I feel like this is something that's so personal. The importance is, I just want to express to you the importance of vision boards. We're going to talk about that. 
And then I'm going to have y'all do that. And we're going to, we're going to touch on different vision boards next week. So that's what I'm, we're going to do for now. But what I'm just going to talk to you guys, why a vision board? Okay. So a vision board will help you to visualize your dreams, right? So there's a lot of different um, um, studies behind it that says um, the concept of a vision board is that it, that thought precedes behavior. Mindset drives behavior and drives outcomes. So Rory talks a lot about mindsets. Rory, I'm going to have you chime in here soon. Um, about mindsets because that's what a vision board is. It's your your thought. You're seeing it now, so it's in your thoughts, and that's going to drive your mindset. It's going to drive your behavior to achieve what you want to achieve. By constantly reviewing and updating your goals, you strengthen your commitment and increase your motivation to take action. So looking at them regularly helps you to visualize what you hope to achieve, and this creates a positive and powerful image in your mind that makes it easier to do so. So I wanted to talk about that because. That's what we're talking about. Where's your background? Where's your, where, that's why I got talked all about that in the other hour was all about don't set them too easy. Know your boundaries and um, make sure you're with a group that can that wants to grow and is going to push you. You guys can't give up on yourselves. It breaks my heart, you all, that some of you guys just don't believe you can get there. And I just, I just, my heart breaks for you because you can get there. That's what we have set up for you. We want you to find happiness because all things lead to like, like the squirrel analogy of protect your nuts. Once you have your overhead that you need, you can make decisions in your life that make, give you joy. People are, you guys, a lot of people don't have that. They're so trying, so working so hard to make their financial overhead meet, but they don't have any joy in their life. They're living day to day. They're sleeping, getting up, working, sleeping, getting up and working. And so you need to visualize all these things, you guys. I don't care if you want to live in a castle, put it down. You want, an, you want a motorcycle? Put a picture of that up there. You want to go to the beach, put your, put a picture of, of toes in the sand or whatever motivates you, whatever you guys want. And it's okay. It, it's okay. If someone tells you it's a pie in the sky, there are two things. One, cut them out of your life. Don't listen to them anymore. Two, think of it as a direction to push you forward because it's not a pie in the sky. That can happen. Everything can happen. And then you're going to set it into tangible goals to reach. Now, the thing about this I want to say is Make sure you're setting goals with a timeline. They have to be set with a timeline. So your vision board is going to be your, your dreams. And then you're going to map your, maybe that dream is, like I said, maybe that's a 10-year goal. That's okay. Still have it there. Still have it visualized. Yeah, be open to it. And then we're going to make your path for this year. What goals are you going to achieve this year to get you partially there? Or maybe all the way there. You don't know until you start going and you reassess yourself. But I do want to say to make sure that you're setting your goals to go to every single event. We only have a few of them. When you're there, we can reassess and we look at, I'm going to try really hard to re-look at the goals with you guys. I think Rory's going to, Rory, you're going to let me do that, right? As we do every event. Is it, Rory? Yes. So if they set their goals to achieve there, we can have a time to have like a little goal session at the different events, right? Absolutely. Okay. So that's what we're going to do. You guys can set, set your goals. And make sure your goals are timed around our events. Right now we have event, an event in January. Then we're gonna we're gonna have we have there's a leadership event for those who want to make it in you know, not want to, but who are pushing to make it and can make it in um April. Um and then we have we're gonna have our we always have our fall event, September, October. I don't think we have the date quite yet, um, but it's coming there. So did I say September? Oh, September, October. Yeah, September, October is an event. That one is pretty special to me because it's also our wine event. And then we have, like I said, we have our event in January. So January, February, we're always going to have an event. We're always going to have an event in September and October. So those are pretty much our events. It's two a year, guys. It's, it's a life changer. I would consider that an investment in yourself. Normally, if you worked for a company, you would be pay, sent there and paid for it because it's a personal growth. I've been sent working for people. I've been sent many places to do things like that. But you work for yourself. So you're your own boss. So tell yourself to go. That's that simple. Tell yourself to go. Make it happen. Make an investment in you. And here's the great thing. If you make an investment in the trip, even if you think you can't afford it, your goal can be to afford it. So set it, put it in motion, work your butt off to get it. God will direct your path, guys. He'll make you happy. He'll make it, he'll make it, he make you help, he'll help you achieve it. If it's for a good purpose and, and your happiness is a good purpose, that is a good purpose. So that's what I want to say, guys, it, about the vision board. I want you guys to really work on that and focus on that. I want you to take some time too, to kind of look at the different goals map out your goals. We're going to hit on this some more next Saturday. I'm going to share if you guys would be willing to share some of your goals. 
and your and share some of your vision boards. I want to we want to share some of that. So Stacy, don't hate me. But can you do a spreadsheet? <laughs> my other my other with it. What would you like me to do a spreadsheet on for you, dear? I would like to see people's pages for their for their goals. Um, hopefully, you guys will write a PBS page. You'll give and you'll send the link to, to your MSI or if, if Stacy's your MSI, then to Stacy and then on to Stacy so we can have it. So I'm going to be going on that next Saturday. I'll be going through there. We'll pick it and sharing. So I want you guys to have a vision board online. And then at that by that, I also want it to be someplace because you're not on that page on your PBS every day, right? So I want it also to be someplace in your in your life, wherever you want to see it. Like I said, maybe it's in the mirror. You get up in the morning, you're getting ready that you can see it. Maybe it's in your office. If you have a place on the wall, maybe it's a notebook like me because I don't have a home. <laughs> so I travel everywhere. So I have it in my notebook. But I'm but Stacy's my favorite on the spreadsheet. So <laughs> I'll, I'll oh. get her done. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, honey. So anyway, so yeah, so give the information to her and then we can move on and we're going to share that. But you guys are so this is so important. It's the reason why I've been taking so much time today is because it's the this is an investment in you. I'm investing in you. I'm investing in your beliefs, your directions, your goals. I want your happiness. I want your success. And that is in all areas. And, and RRR247 is here to help you with the financial overhead, to help you quit that job, to help you be a stay-at-home mom or a stay-at-home dad or a stay-at-home grandma or grandpa. That's fine too. Wherever you are in life, we're here to help you with that. And we have such a great vehicle, such great, a, such a great motivational direction with what we have here, with the community that we have here, with the culture that we've built up. And then also, again, with our anchor offers and the things that we have with that and the directions of that. I'm so I'm so blessed that we have, have what we have and that we are in that in that capacity. It's just, it's so important. And I believe so much in what we are doing. So um, yeah, make sure you guys take the time, reassess yourself, write down these, make yourself a page, get it over to Stacy. Write down your goals. I want to see vision boards. I want to see, I want to see what you guys are, are dreaming of. And now if you got when for those of you guys who are coming, which I hope it's all of you guys on this call <laughs> coming to the, the event, we'll go over more specifically different, different things. And I'm going to, we'll work with you guys on achieving things because I feel like some people don't realize how to set goals and how to, um, what's easy and what's not. And until you do it and start working towards that goal, you won't know. But I can help you break them down. I'm super good at breaking breaking goals down to achievable steps. I can break them all the way down. Like I think Niall talks about this a lot on Tuesdays. I take a year goal, I break it down. I break it down to quarters, months, and then weeks, and even days. I, I can break it all the way down so you can achieve it and make it more realistic for you. So we're going to take some time with that um, um, for that training as well. So Rory. Yes. I think I'm done. <laughs> that is, that is, well, this has been an awesome training. Um, I'm going, I'm just going to close out just a couple things here and then, and then we're going to get ready for, um, we, we go right into to the, to the, to the, I call it the power, the, the power of the eddies because there are our top recruiters. You guys can learn how to do the B marketing and we're not, we never record that. So that's going to be the next thing. But I thought but, I kind of overtook that, babe. I kind of, I, I went way into it. So I think the, we're gonna, I, we still have time to do an hour, right? I think we're going to forgive that this this week is what I said. Uh, I I I know you said that, but I'm uh, Dina. Do you, are you guys ready to go an hour? I can go as long as you need me to. Wow. Maybe, I, I I I'm going to say, guys, you're going to want to do that. I, I'm going to we're going to go right to that right after this. But I just want to close out this by, I yeah, this will be on the replay. Um, we're gonna we're gonna make it part of the training as well in in our back office with some new changes. Um, let me uh.